All right. Hello, Sawyer. Hello, Spoon. How are you doing today? I was looking at this for about two minutes before I started, so... It looks like I grabbed the rocket part from here already. I kind of remember grabbing that. And... Oh, actually, yeah, it's uh, top right corner here. So we got engine assembly... No, we got one of the fuel tanks done. Stage 3 fuel tank. Okay. So yeah, we still got the one down here, it looks like. And then we got the one that we're up at over here. Hello, South Fang. How are you doing today? One second. Alright. So yeah, I think we just gotta do the two rocket assembly parts. We still gotta do cargo cult. We gotta go way up here for means of production. We have to do ice adventure. I think we are unlucky expedition. We gotta do that one as well. What was the last one? Closer to heaven, we gotta do that. Looking forward to some SnowRunner. Glad to see you're back on SnowRunner. Hey, good to see you back. Yeah, it's been a little bit, hasn't it? I was hoping to get some more stuff done. I'm only 45% done with Expeditions. I was hoping to get like 70-ish. But, yeah, it's alright. I just, I wanted to get it close to done so that if I, like, when I alternate between the two, that I could finish it off before uh, Season 13 came out, which is supposed to come out in probably like 10-ish days. Something like that from the rumors. Or not rumors, I guess. The uh, the goal of S. Roken. All right, looks like I fueled up here before uh, before we quit. Let's see. So we got 193 in the warthog, about 230 in the Tatran. Which way do we want to go there? Hmm. Because I absolutely hate this path. It's super slow. I feel like this one might might be the best one. All right. Do you remember how to play SnowRunner? Yeah, we'll see if the controls come back to me, huh? The uh, the only good thing is is that when I push the uh, oh gosh, this is not packed. Well, that's news. I don't know why I thought it would be packed, but I just assumed I would have had it packed, I guess. I probably just put it in here before this, didn't I? Uh, the good thing about this is that when I, when I push the buttons, like the D-pad on the steering wheel, it actually, like, moves the camera, whereas on Expeditions it opens up your equipment or goes in first-person view or, you know, some other stuff. So that's kind of why I haven't really used the wheel, so... Um, it might be a little bit out of practice, but... Should be fine. Put out your anchors. Yeah, I always forget that. I'm very bad with uh, using the anchors. Good thing you brought the crane, yeah, because otherwise we would have had to go back and get something else, because the two trucks we have right there don't have a crane. But yeah, we're actually, what are we at percentage-wise? Uh, 43%, not too bad. It's not that heavy, though, would be more tippy. Are you talking about unpacking it? Not too bad for a Monday sluggish throw. Wait, sluggish through a mirror, okay. Oh, man. Yeah, it's way more bouncy in this game. <laughs> yeah. It's probably why we uh, almost lost the load after five seconds of moving. 
Now, I'm sure the controls will trip me up a little bit when I grab the controller every once in a while, just because I uh, played the expeditions for two, two and a half weeks. Yeah, I think we'll probably switch back and forth like every other day. I do want to try and finish that. Hang on one second, I gotta move something quick too. Um, there we go. Oh, I shouldn't have stopped, lost the momentum. Yeah, I just I want to finish that before season 13 comes out so that we can just play through 13. Or not even not even play through 13, but like, you know, play 13 and this, kind of have that one sort of out of the way. Otherwise we'd have to switch between the three, the hard mode, season 13, and expeditions. But yeah, I kind of just want to finish that one, get it done. And that way we can work on all the new stuff as it comes out. Because a big chunk of that is actually... Because I think there's probably only like five or six upgrades, maybe like seven or something on every map there. So... See, there is seven, which I don't think there is, but we'll just say there's seven on every map. It'd be 28 plus 28, so that's 56. And there's uh, 205 upgrades, so that means still three quarters of them are, are found through doing missions and stuff, which... It's kind of a lot. So, yeah, we are 45%. We're done with, like, <clears throat> maybe 75% of the expeditions. But we still have all kinds of random stuff to do to get a bunch of upgrades, so... Hello, Claude. How are you doing today? Welcome to the stream. So yeah, probably the goal for the day would be get both of these rocket parts back. It's been so long since I played, like, I don't I don't remember if I have a good amount of fuel on here, or if we're, like, almost completely out. I think I gotta go to the right here, don't I? Yeah, okay. Like, I don't, I don't really remember where we were at, kinda. It's been almost three weeks. Good, you might might do some stuff. Okay. Oh, we are hanging up on the front bumper on the uh, rock there. Okay. At least the sun's going up. That should help, right? <laughs> Make it a little bit brighter for the first. Uh, oops. First little bit here. I just thought about this. Like, what a weird weird place to come back to as far as like so expeditions the ground is like so much harder like you know the trucks are less less bouncy they feel heavier and stuff so they they drive really well and now we're in like the worst not the worst map but the worst region as far as like difficulty goes so we go from like a really easy drive to probably one of the toughest ones hey jj how is amir in hard mode uh, so far, so good. Well, if you don't count the first couple of minutes when we flip the cargo out. <laughs> but other than that, good. Keep hearing the tigers in a mirror, but you never see them. To be honest, I don't- I haven't really paid attention to the- the animals in this game, just because they're- I don't know, they disappear, like, I don't know. I don't know, I just think it's weird. Oh, shit, I never- I moved my steering wheel, but I never, like, locked it into place, so I just bumped it, and I was like, oh, crap, that's not supposed to be there. Uh, but yeah, I don't really pay attention to the animals just because they disappear. It's kind of like, yeah, what's the point? I never try and look for them or anything. I've heard they have some UFOs and wolves and fishermen, mushroom pickers, sasquatches. Yeah. They growl, but you can't see them. If you look them up on uh, Map Runner, they'll show you where they're at. I think they're called sightings on there. If you take off, if you take everything else off and you just have the sightings on, it'll make it pretty clear as to where they're at.
You saw a bear and a mirror once on top of a rock. Yeah, I think there is one. There's one that specifically stands out to me. It's in uh, Cosmodrome. When you leave the garage, it's just south of there, and you're kind of going around a hill, and it's... Actually, oh wait, I was just about to show you on the map, but I'm like, wait, no, I don't have that map unlocked yet. Um, but yeah, it's like... I'm trying to picture the orientation of the map a little bit. It'd be it'd be straight south of your garage, but going, I think, uh, going west on the map, something like that. There's a bear, there's a bear up on the hill on the right, like on a rock. Okay, this is not going to go well, is it? Here's that one tree that always gets us. And it's getting us. Let's see. I've already screwed up a few times as far as the controls. Like right there, I pushed up first to open the... Or, uh... Actually, I already forgot the button combination that I pushed that screwed it up. But I pushed one button, it wasn't the right one. And then I push the other one. And as, as soon as you attach the winch and Expeditions, you can just start pulling it. You don't have to close the Functions menu, but on here... I opened it up and I was like, you need to close the Functions menu first. I'm like, ah, dang it. Took me took me a long time to get used to it, and then now I'm... Now that I'm finally used to it, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna be using it. Uh... You're driving with the Tega Balloon Tires. Yes, that is correct. Um... Oh yeah, that was where the bear was funny. That's the only one that I really remember. That's for some reason that one kind of stands out to me. Not like you encountered a black bear, yeah. Seen enough. All right, let's try and go left here. I don't really like going straight off this thing. Although depending on the vehicle, the bigger trucks can just drive right off and be fine. Good evening, Mateo. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Isaiah, you as well. Bend in the tree back. Does anyone remember off the top of their head how many spots the, uh, what is it? I think it's the engine, because this is, I'm pretty sure, is the other fuel tank. How many spots that one takes up? If I remember right, it's, it's like two, because I think these ones are three, the first two. I think that one might be two. Oh, shoot, I missed my turn. I missed my turn. All right, well... We're going back right now. The engine is only one? Okay. I guess that's good. We can fit that in pretty much any truck then. The Ice Baron Cola is pretty obvious as well. I don't know if I've seen that one. I mean, maybe I have, but I don't... I don't remember any in Cola. Oh, you did this contract this weekend. Well, thank you, Selfang. That's helpful. It's been, like, over two years. We need a crane, though. Yeah, we have a little blue crane here. I, I think we can lift it. Obviously, a bigger crane would be easier. I don't know if we have a big crane around. I think we still have this step towards the gateway, if I remember right. I don't think I moved it. I might have brought it back to the garage, but I, I really don't remember. It's been too long. Blue will be fine? Alright.
kind of forgot what the music sounded like now that I'm kind of used to the expeditions background music. Kind of a quiet... The quiet before the storm, or the calm before the storm sort of music, right? So yeah, I'm not really sure what we got contract-wise out here, but um, tasks and we're tests and contests were almost done with those. Well, I shouldn't say contests, but tasks were almost done with. I think we did one contest out of two or maybe three. Two for sure. I know there's one on the ice up behind us there. trailer jump. Did you guys miss seeing Snowrunner? I know there's quite a few people in here who are watching expeditions as well. You're having trouble finishing the last expedition on Carpathians. Overall picture can't find fish pond in the, with the echo sounder. Really? Is it called... Uh... Oh shoot, I forget the name. I, I literally took a picture of one. It took me so long to figure it out. I thought about just making a community post and just being like, Hey, if you do this one, here's the spots. Because it took me like 15 minutes to find that one. It was really annoying. I think it was called Water Composition. That one annoyed the crap out of me. The circle is super tiny. And the th I tried adjusting the brightness on my screen, bringing it all the way up to see if that would help, but I still couldn't see anything. I was clicking stuff all over the place, could not find it. There's two really small chunks. Um, I really like the animations when finishing contracts. Makes it worth the effort. This was pretty cool. Yeah, they did have some really cool animations in the first year. It seems like they kind of sort of faded out with them. I shouldn't say faded out, but they, they seem like they've gotten less and less as time has went on, right? Should be here. Love the last cutscene in Wisconsin. Is that the one with the train leaving? Can't remember if that's the last contract or if that's just a random one. Oops. Dang man, we're taking a lot of... I'm forgetting that this is hard mode. I'm just taking a bunch of damage. Okay, cargo management. That one's done. Actually, let's uh, shut this down. Let's take a look here. So we got Tuz 166 behind the garage for some reason. I think I might have been running out to that, it looks like. Acteon's up here on the road. 60% fuel. Okay, so we do have the 310E still back at the gateway. Um, if you guys don't know, we just finished off uh, Northern in the last episode, so now we're done with Northern Ages installation, which is why these two trucks are here with the trailer. 
the Warthog and um, Warthog and Tuz420 are right there. Sentinel, where is that at? By the fuel station, okay. And the Zix. I don't, I must have dropped something off here. And yeah, that's it, okay, so. I guess, maybe let's do the Tuz166 here. We'll go grab this one, I don't know what it's for or anything really. Uh, love hitting a road after getting, or digging through some woods, yeah. You dig through some long, muddy or snowy area and then you get to a place where you actually can drive for a bit. Currently restoring the garage in Maine, no animations there. It's just like, boom, trailer store pops up, boom, garage. Yeah, I think I actually, if I remember, I, that's actually what I said when I made my video. I was like, boom, there you go. Just popped up, you know. Actually, this might be too small to get this gap. Oh, oh, okay, good, we got it. Oh, you know what, this one might actually be able to do the, uh, the contest in the north, too, because I know you have to drive across a bunch of breakable ice. I might, might have to go up there and do that. Actually, I should go up there and do that with this. Because I know the Tuz 420 falls through. I think I used a couple of bigger vehicles before. I think I used, like, the Apache. I think that might have worked. I don't really remember. But this one i almost positive should work. It shouldn't fall through. Let's see, found your channel from looking at expeditions, but I really like SnowRunner. You, oh, you like SnowRunner more than the new game, okay. Well, hello JJ Gill. I feel like we have something in common. Got the initials there. Um, heck yeah, nice, nice gapper. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm having fun with expeditions, but I'm, I'm on the same page with you. I, I enjoy the SnowRunner a little bit more. I like the deliveries side of things. Or maybe, I could even probably say a lot of it more. But I am having fun with expeditions. Okay, consumables to the residence house. Okay. So now I'm debating, should I cross this and go up here and then go down? Or go all the way back? Yeah, let's cross this, I think. Oh, but you also bought expeditions. Okay. You have... You have all of them, okay. I, uh, I've played Mudrunner a little bit. I still would like to go back and play more of Mudrunner. But I haven't really... I, I, I remember I played uh, Deluge for the first time... I don't know, it must have been like a month and a half, two months ago or something on my... <coughs> Excuse me. On my channel one day. Uh, I played it a couple months before that as well, just kind of playing some random missions. But yeah, I'd like to play through more of Mudrunner. I enjoy that as well. I just, I enjoy these types of games in general. More of the uh, off-road than the, than the non-off-road. So like, I prefer to play Mudrunner over like ATS, I think. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. I don't think I can back up either without chains. Oh, yeah, we can, okay. I guess... I don't really feel comfortable going back the other way either. I think I'll try this one more time. If we fall in or something, I guess, whatever, but... Oh, there we go. Took some damage to do it, but we got it. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy, um, I enjoy SnowRunner a little bit more, <coughs> excuse me. I enjoy SnowRunner a little bit more, or a lot of it more, than Expeditions, but I'm having fun with Expeditions, which is why I keep playing it. I actually do genuinely enjoy driving around those vehicles, and the way that the game, like, plays, like, the vehicles just feel heavier, and, I don't know, it's just, it's, it scratches an itch that SnowRunner can't, I guess. There's something to it that's kind of fun about it. I know there's a lot of bugs, but hopefully those get, get fixed and patched out. What are those yellow circles on your map? Oh, um, 
So if you're playing it on hard mode, they don't tell you exactly where the stuff is, they just give you a zone. So on normal mode, it'll tell you, it'll show you exactly where to pick it up. So for here, I think there's one, yeah, here, let me grab my mouse quick. There's one right here. And so like it just says, hey, there's three consumables in these two circles. So go find them. I actually don't really remember where the other ones are. I thought there, yeah, here's one. Um, where is the last one? It's been such a long time since I done did these ones. Oh, there it is. Okay. So there we go. We got to go pick up those three and then drop them off back over here. That is what the circles are. Uh, if you're on normal mode, it'll it'll show this pickup icon on the map exactly where it is. It'll just show you like right here. So it just makes it a little bit more difficult, you could say. I don't I don't I guess I don't know if it's really more difficult, but it takes a little bit more time, so Maybe. I platinumed Mudrunner and Snowrunner back to back. Wow. That was a blast. Looking forward to playing Expeditions. Nice. Yeah, so that's that's probably the main reason, I would say, for people who haven't played the, the game before, if they're going to jump in, that you should probably play a little bit of normal mode so you kind of understand where to pick stuff up and where to drop it off and kind of the general, you know gameplay mechanics. Oh shoot, I'm going the wrong way. Um, before they, uh, before they jump into hard mode, because yeah, it'll just show you a location like that and you'll be like, uh, where is it? You know, some of them are harder than others. Like some of those ones were kind of hidden in between those trees where it's like, you really got to look for it. Other ones are also like, I remember there was one in Tamu that kind of tripped me up. There was two of them pretty close to each other, and it said there was three of them. So I kept looking through these two zones, just looking and looking and looking, and I couldn't find it. And then I zoomed way out, which I had zoomed out before, but I didn't zoom like all the way out. There was one way in the top left corner, and I didn't see the circle. It's like cut off on the map. It's so far up there. Like, you know, only half the circle's on the map or something. And I was like, oh, there it is. Like, it just took me a long time to figure it out. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that now. What do you play on? I play on PC. Um, I'm currently using, well, between a steering wheel, a controller, and the mouse. I kind of switch, you know, use all three of them as I play right now. Uh, I just, when I use the crane and stuff, I just find it a lot easier to use the controller. Although, for some reason, my, uh, my controller... I have, I have rechargeable batteries. My controller charger just stopped working like last week. I don't know why. I put them on there and before it was kind of finicky. You have to like lift up the controller like 20 times to get it right in the perfect spot for it to charge. And it's weird because it's like, it's got like three, you know, the, the three dots in the uh, metal for to put the rechargeable batteries. So it shouldn't need to be like perfect, but for some reason it was really picky probably a crappy model or something but um and then now all of a sudden it just stopped working so it do doesn't charge my batteries anymore so that's a bummer probably have to get another one just because you, otherwise you go through batteries so quickly um but yeah i play on pc for expeditions i was using an xbox controller the entire time but that's just because when i push left right up and down on there it opens up like the devices, it goes to first person, your equipment. I forget what down is, but um, maybe it's nothing. But yeah, it, it does some other stuff. Whereas here, if I push right or left or down or up, you know, it's moving my camera. So that makes it a little bit uh, a little bit easier on here. So I'm, I know some people, they, they use a mouse to look around or a controller, which I use the controller, but for them, it seems like their their reaction, like to switch from the mouse or controller back to the, the wheel is instant. For mine, it takes like a second. There's like a second of lag there or something. I don't know exactly how to explain it. Oh wait, this is the contest I wanted. Um, it, it takes me like a second 
And so sometimes I'll, I'll look, but then my vehicle's stuck going forward or whatever position I last left it on for a second. So it really can mess me up sometimes. So, yeah, I don't know. I try, I try to use both, but I, I use the wheel a lot just because I don't want to have that second of lag. If we're looking around with the camera. All right, let's shut this off quick and refuel. Sorry, I'm pushing all the wrong buttons again. Okay, so we gotta go... Let's mark this out quick. I think... Probably just hit, hit point... Oops, let me clear all these other points. Okay, so probably just hit this one, I think. And this one, this one that one and that one something like that so we'll go one three two four five maybe i don't really know okay usually i forget to check gold time so 335 to four minutes plus i was doing all the contests um three or five times which is the maximum you can do on hard mode up until wisconsin wisconsin i didn't do them all five times i did them once and that was it. But all of Michigan, all of Tamir, or all of, yeah, all of Michigan, all of Alaska, all of Tamir, all of Kola, and all of Yukon, I did all of them five times. I'm pretty sure I did all of Yukon's five times. I remember thinking like, oh, I don't want to do this one again, but I think I ended up doing them all again. But Wisconsin, I think I stopped doing them five times. I wanted to do them all five times just so I have absolutely zero reason to ever go back there. You know, like, I can't even make a single dollar going back, but now I guess I could go back. I'd, you know, make... Oh, shoot, I kind of forgot I was doing a contest here. I was just driving. Um, but yeah, oh, God, no. Yep, there's a fail. Nice. All right. Oops. Gra okay. Glad I didn't recover. Still getting used to the controls and expeditions, I guess. Um, well, yeah, we failed it anyways, so let's do... We could use the 605R to pick up these... ...consumables, but we still need a tr uh, truck with a crane on it, which it's way up here. I could drive this back, I guess. Maybe that's the play. Make sure to equip your rocket boosters. This will help you with your speed. Speed kills. That's uh, as soon as we hit that like breakable ice, it just flew our, flung our truck to the side. I should have gone in a little bit slower, I guess. It's been so long since I've played it. I bet you if I had a heavier vehicle, it probably would have worked out a little better. Because that one's so light, it kind of hit it and just the whole back end lifted up. Whereas if it was something heavier, it might hit it and just kind of pop up a little bit. Hello, finally back on Snow Runner. Yes, we are B-Row. Welcome back. Uh, you can drive through... You can drive on breakable ice with a light scout. Uh, yeah, you can. I did the contest with the Zix too. Took you about 14 minutes. Wow. Which, uh, I'm trying to think of which Zix you would have used. Because all the big ones would fall through. 5368 probably is too heavy, I would guess. Right, let's grab a crane or a touch a winch here. Yeah, see there, it told me to close the functions again. That's my uh, expeditions coming back in. Now I'm just trying to winch right away. Gotta close the functions first. Not exactly looking to go to the right, but I'll take it for now. And let's see if we can attach this one back here, maybe. I don't know if that's getting any closer or not. Probably not.
Hello, glad I checked. Hey, Daniel, welcome back. I think you... If I remember right, you popped into one or two of the streams, but it's been a while. Um, if you want to see some Lord of the Rings gameplay, I did a live stream of the Third Age a couple days ago, Two Towers. I don't think I've ever played Lord of the Rings games. I, I know I've told you guys before, I don't really watch many movies, but I've seen all of the Lord of the Rings movies, so... My friends made me go to those back in the day. You can go on- oh, on the rocks? I've never even thought about that. I usually just pull myself through, but that would probably be a pretty good idea there. The Zig 605R, the one you find in a mirror, drives through the breakable ice. Oh, okay. So, you did it, but it took a long time. <laughs> Hang on. Oops. I just tried to shut off my engine. That's why the winch just shot out at the end there. You have one complaint. Why are your trucks so heavy? Reduce the weight of the trucks with flux capacitors. Yeah, we need to get some Back to the Future uh, stuff in here. Wait. Is it... Okay. Erska River has two. Okay, so we gotta do one here. That's it. And then we got two in Cosmo. And four in Cherno. Okay, that's not too bad. So once we do that one contest, then we're done with the contest here in Erska River. But yeah, I think we'll... Um, we'll get the consumables, those three. And actually, we could... I mean, I get, we could use the, the 605R. That would probably be the best case scenario to get that last rocket part, right? You'll probably stream a bit tonight. Not sure if it will be Lord of the Rings or Need for Speed Underground 2. Okay, welcome back, Cell Fang. I will play the three Return of the King soon. You have it here. Play with your old Xbox adapter, RCA HDMI, with Evermedia. Okay. Yeah, I still have my old Xbox, but I actually I actually uh, broke the the red, white, and blue cables. I think the video one broke, if I remember right. But it might have been one of the audio cables. Like, the, the prong inside broke off. I'm like, oh, come on. Uh, I'm doing good today, Mateo. How are you? Hello, David. How are you doing as well? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking, guys. This is, uh, this is the slow part in here. I was hoping to knock that contest out with that small little truck and get it done, but I guess it's kind of okay because we have to go out that way anyways. Oops. To uh, to grab a trailer, I believe it is, for the... Or no, it's a cargo container for... One of the uh, tasks. I don't remember the name. Okay, get me... Sorry, I meant to go first person so I could attach that tree. Not bad, thanks. Got a meeting in 30 minutes, just enjoyed a quick break. Oh, nice. I, I personally hate meetings. They just drive me nuts just sitting there not doing anything for a while. Sure, they can be productive, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't, I don't like meetings. They're just boring. But I guess they are easy money, right? There is that. Jump scare. Yeah. Sorry. Probably even cheaper since you're in the USA. I add extra fee for Canadian delivery. Okay. This is just really, really slow here. How many of you guys have beat Amir? Like, all the contracts at least. Maybe not all the contests and uh, tasks, but how many of you guys have actually beaten Amir with the main, main gameplay, I guess we'll say? Basically, who, who has launched the rocket is what I want to know. How many of you guys have seen the uh, rocket launch? 
no fuel tank with you on this voyage. Brava, fella. Yeah, not this time. We, uh, we used the... We used a small scout fuel tank in Northern for a bit, but we brought it back out, I think. If I remember right, it's a little bit up in front of me here. But honestly, we'll probably be pretty close on fuel to get there. So I think you're at 28% and Super Kiwi 100, nice. Yeah, I kind of just want to know who, who has launched the rocket, because we'll be doing that pretty soon. Or at least I hope so. 100% rocket launch, nice Ian. Spoon, 100%, so that's three. Two logging contracts in Cherno, then all contracts task complete, but I have been playing season 12. Okay, so... Sounds like you're basically done, uh, Daniel. I'm trying to remember if I have fuel in the small scout fuel tank or not. I know we have a big fuel tank on the other map that we haven't moved around yet. I suppose you could go get that, but... I don't know. Has anybody ever tried to put the, uh... the engine assembly for the fuel, or uh, whatever it is, the... For the rocket uh, in a single slot truck, because uh, who was it? South thinks that it takes one slot. Nice spoon. You're about the same as South Bang. Wishing you got the Azov to use. Is that the uh, the new Azov you're talking about? The uh, the Atom. I don't do contests, so I don't have 100% in any region. Yeah, that's why I didn't include him. I think if you do all the contracts, you basically got the good part of the phase. Like, whether whether you want to do the tasks... the ta I mean, I still enjoy the tasks, but they're kind of more... sort of extra, like, gameplay to me. But the contests are just totally different, and I just I don't really like them. Not my thing. Old Azov, the one with the really good fuel supply. The 64131? I think. That's the uh, the old, reliable, slow and steady as of. 5319 runs out of fuel too quick. The 73210s... I mean, it's good on fuel, I guess, but... But it's the longer one. That's pretty quick. I'm at 520 hours and only started in phase 6. 650 hours for everything for Spoon. You play on normal or hard mode? You used the sideboard on the Taiga B, had room for, or er, had room for one more, okay. I'm debating on bringing out the Dan there, then. Because the Dan has that single slot add-on, the maintenance add-on. I want to kind of see if it would fit. I bet you it would. You think the Atom is a pass for you? It doesn't bring anything to the game that I can't do with other trucks. I mean, I suppose you're probably right with that. There's lots of other three-slot trucks. It's going to be a, another big truck. There's lots of big trucks. It probably won't do anything much, like, way, way better than any other truck. But usually the Azov trucks are pretty good on fuel. And if that's a big truck, it's good on fuel. That'd be kind of nice. But uh, the main thing that I think will be cool on that truck is the, uh, the maintenance add-on. And I know it's kind of a stupid thing to be excited about, right? It's how often do you use that thing anyways, but... Um, I think it'll be cool. Because usually the small trucks are the ones that have the unique add-ons. As far as the, the maintenance ones go, like the, uh, the crocodile has one. Or the... Or maybe not un unique, but different looking, I guess. Like, there's there's a couple of them that share the same one, like the Acteon and Warthog have that little maintenance add-on, and I think even the 5368 might have that. Um, we got a Crocodile, kind of the smaller trucks, those ones have a... 
unique both fuel add-ons and maintenance add-ons. So I think it'd be cool to see a big unique maintenance add-on. Just my uh, my thought. All right, um, I was using 10 Zix. Oh geez, you were flying then. Uh, five Azovs, the Tatrin, etc. So I was a bit speed running. Now since I know all the overloading mechanic, I think I could do it in less than 600. <laughs> yeah, probably. The one thing that really holds you back on that is the 605R can't have um, the crane as well. If you could overload that, man, that would be you'd be going a lot faster, I think. Because if you're using a lot of 605Rs, they're the like the probably the easiest because they're more most stable and stuff. But or maybe not the most stable, but you know what I mean. Like for a really capable, stable truck, good on fuel, stuff like that. If you could overload that thing. You'd be making really good progress. So the uh, the crane, I wouldn't say it handicaps it, because I think it's good that it doesn't have a crane, to be honest. If, it, if all the trucks were the same, the game would be boring. So it's nice that some trucks have certain add-ons, some don't. Totally okay with that. Or actually, I would want that. Still impressive, though. No mods, 650 hours. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, do I think that's a good amount of time? I'm not really sure. I feel like it probably is. I have no idea how much time I put in on Xbox, but I beat... I beat Michigan, Alaska, Tamir, and I s played part of Cola. I did dink around a lot, but... That was just because that was the first time I had played the game. That was when it first came out. I was messing around with all kinds of stuff on there. Alright, I think we do have fuel, so let's check this out. You can see exactly where the terrain reset. So it's just 50 meters down the road, according to this. And there it is. I drove it just a bit up the road so that this part would reset right where the intersection is there, so we wouldn't have to reset that one every time. Alright, what do we have for fuel in here? 494, okay. Not bad. Does anyone still play regular mode? I haven't enjoyed it and haven't played since hard mode came out. Six hundred and eighty hours to hundred percent everything. Okay, you're pretty similar to Spoon then. With no mods as well. Very nice. I still play regular mode, but I only play it when the new season comes out. Pretty much just to just to play through it once quick. I think last time we played it for what three weeks? I think. It was either two or three weeks. I don't remember how long it took us. I want to say three. Maybe I'm wrong. Do you think your platinum trophy all vanilla was uh, or, uh, all vanilla content on 100%, about 270 hours, okay. Does free fuel annoy you? It didn't annoy me when I played on normal mode, but now I realize that's like the main, sort of the main hindrance on hard mode. Because you can just recover to the garage anytime you want and get free fuel. So there's like, the only time that you get fuel is if you pass a fuel station, which on normal mode you just drive through and grab it and go, you don't even like, pay attention to the prices at all. I think if they even had, like, a $1, $2, $3, you know, price, like, it doesn't have to be up to 8 like it is on hard mode, but if they had some kind of a price, I think that would make it a little bit better. You can go past on the ice. Wait, you can go on the ice, past the river. All the way, it's a lot faster. Uh, are you talking about just staying on the ice down here? I don't think I could sneak past under that bridge with a crane. But yeah, we got on here, drove around and went up here. I, I have gone 
through. Let me grab the mouse this way, up through here. But I don't think with the crane it would have been a good idea, so I usually hit this open gap right there. Um, yeah, we're going to go down. Probably just skip this bad part up here and then right back on here over here. I think this one's the better one right here, so we'll probably do that. I used to go down that part, but then I found out you could go down here. Hello Zavi, hello Rex, welcome to the stream. Come on beautiful people, 41 watching, 20 tickled likes. What I'd like is a small truck, North, North American truck, that used old North American truck engines. With highway tires or even all-terrain tires. Um, so it's not as expensive as the Zix 566A. Sort of like the the Crocodile, but a bit... Well, not... Yeah, it wouldn't even need to be cheaper than the Crocodile. Just like the Crocodile, but North American. Because the Crocodile is really good, especially for the price. Uh, I'm doing good, Zavi. How are you doing? Like added. Thank you, Super Kiwi. Mia culpa. I don't remember what that means. Like, oh my, or something like that. Super Kiwi, would you mind explaining? I don't remember what exactly that means. I know I've heard it before. Yeah, that would be really cool, Daniel, because I love the Crocodile. Crocodile's an awesome truck. From the church to the bridge... Hang on, let me, uh, let me pull this up then. From the church... Way up here down to the bridge but you need to go around the bridge oh from this this area just down here you need to go around the bridge somehow the water must I know the water is not too deep because you can cross right here but I don't know how you would uh how you'd get around that with this current setup I don't know if that would work very well you, you would probably know better than I have because I've never gone down there but it means my fault? Oh, okay. Thank you for that, Mateo. Met. Good, break time at work. How's, uh, how's your work going today? Hopefully everything's going well for you. Your video is behind, Rex? Okay. Oh, jeez. Actually, I flipped right in the same spot earlier. Um, like, I don't know which stream it was, but like, I don't know, five, ten streams ago, whatever it was since we started this. I remember we hit the same spot and flipped over. Because it's hard to see the dip right there. You don't really see it, especially at night. Hello, ATL. How are you doing? Oh, almost flipped. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. I mainly play in hard mode. Sorry, I mean I missed. I'm at the village. Okay, yeah, I got you. Uh, played around with some some of the DLC vehicles in normal mode. Just passed a hundred thousand on one of my hard mode files, and thinking about getting enough money for the Tatra T813. Yeah, the Tatra is a good truck. The uh, I think the T813, I mean, this is this is probably outdated, but it used to be able to hold a ton of, well, it still can hold a ton of spare parts, but it's probably been passed up by a few trucks now. But, yeah, I think it was, like, the second most behind the Zix. But that was, that was the last time I checked that was probably, like, a year ago, but actually, maybe not. Because I don't think any of the Scout trucks, the Burlak probably didn't pass it. The, uh... Neo Falcon probably didn't, Rock Grinder probably didn't, Femme probably didn't, Kenworth probably didn't. Um, what else would there be? The Mac probably would, yeah, so maybe it's maybe it's still up there, but um, it's a little bit slow. It does come stock with mud tears, I believe, though. That's kind of nice for hard mode. Save me some money. And, uh... What else? I think it's pretty limited on add-ons. It has like a towing platform, a two-slot bed, 
Saddle high. Hello, Lonnie. Welcome back to the stream. How are you doing, Lonnie? All right, let's take off the uh, all-wheel drive here. I am doing good, Lonnie. Thank you for asking. So we delivered, uh, what was it, the rocket fuel assembly, I think it was called? Something like that. Uh, we still got to go get one more, one of the three parts, which is down in a pit. But I think I'm going to change the add-ons on this truck now. Let's go customize frame add-ons. Do a bed, a crane, and I think we'll change the color just because we're in a snowy region. Actually, let's change it to a darker blue. Hmm. That one just seems too bright. That one kind of matches the crane. Let's go with that. What truck is that? Never mind, I see it now. Yeah, this is the Step 310E. Alright, let's... Okay, where were those three again? So we got... Turn this a bit. We got one here. One here. Where was the last one, wasn't it? I gotta turn that task back on. Cargo cult, here it is. There is one more, oh, here it is. Okay, so let's go down and around, probably grab those two. Oh, that's right, this was actually destroyed because we had the Tuz 166 close to here, that's nice. Take, save us a little bit of damage. What trucks do you use when scouting? Trucks or scouts? Uh, I use big trucks. I don't really scout. I, I The only time I scout is on PTS, really. Because when I play the game on PTS, right? I'll, I'll, I try and uncover the entire maps. So for all, you know... That way when I show like where the upgrades are and how to get the trucks and other random stuff, like the maps are totally uncovered, I can kind of look around everywhere. So I'll usually run around with the prototype explor exploration unit trailer. Although last time I, I used the, uh, the Tuz, Tuz Rin 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 or something I think it's called. It has like a radar mod. Uh, that made season 12 go a little bit faster. I don't usually use mods, but I thought to save some time I'll use one. I think I might actually continue to use it just for, uh, speeding things up. Cause it's not, it's not the, it doesn't really affect my, my, uh, gameplay too much I guess as far as that, that part goes. Cause that one's more just... Kind of to show you guys stuff and learn the map or whatever, not not really uh, playing through it. Um, but yeah, I just use whatever, because once I learn the map that way, I don't, I usually, I have a pretty good memory, so I'm, I'm just like, oh yeah, it's over here for this and over there for that part, and so I don't really, jeez, uh, this is rockier than I remember, holy crap. Maybe I shouldn't have gone down this way. Um, so yeah, I don't usually scout after that. Once I learn it, do that once, I'm kind of just like, okay, we, we don't need to go down this road to the left. There should be... Oh, come on. Oh, yes. Barely got that save off. Oof. Oh, we did lose the engine. Okay. Okay, that was a little bit dangerous, wasn't it, guys? I saw the truck tipping and was able to pop it up just in time. Okay, let's put that crane back away now. Would you recommend the truck over the Taiga? Um, mm, I probably wouldn't. I think the Taiga is a little better overall, but this one can have the crane and the, the two-slot bed. 
whereas the Taiga cannot. Uh, so the Taiga currently is equipped with a crane and a uh, semi-sideboard bed. So, it just, I'm trying to use them to the best of their uh, capabilities, I guess, as far as add-ons and stuff go. I like running two slots because I don't like having to return the trailers, but in hard mode, you don't need to return them because you don't get any money for it. So, for this, I, I don't really mind using the trailers. Alright, I gotta find out how far exactly this is in. Now I keep doing the expeditions thing of... It's gonna be kind of tough to get to, isn't it? Let me clear these again. We'll go this one, this one, this one. Um, that's set up better for the trucks than the big crane. Oh yeah, definitely. The big green is really heavy, especially on this one. When I was going through Northern, it was really, really slow. Like, it was just dragging. It was super hard to get through there. Well, I shouldn't say super hard, super slow. It works, but I wouldn't wouldn't recommend having the big crane on this. Um, I played a little bit with it on normal mode in Team Year and liked it. That's what I'm thinking of buying it on my YouTube video, or YouTube file, yeah. I like the truck as well. I, I remember because... I played the game a little bit at the start, and then I took a long break. I told this before, but I went on a vacation. And then I came back, and I was just playing other games when I came back. And so I took, like, basically an entire year away. I played Season 1 when that came out, and then I stopped for all of Season 2 and Season 3. And then I came back to it when Season 4 had just come out. So it was like... I want to say it was like July of 2020 that I stopped, and then probably like July of 2021 or something when I came back to it. So basically an entire entire year away. And um, when I came back they had the year one pass or whatever out. Or not year one pass, uh, the year one, year two pass or something. I don't remember where you get the, uh, the Tatras but I think it might have been part of the year one. It might have been year two, I don't know. But I remember playing with them because they were in my garage. And I was like, oh cool. I think I, I played all through, uh, I played all through Michigan with the base trucks, and then once I got to Alaska, I was like, alright, well now that I'm ranked, like, 25 or whatever it was, I'm like, oh, I can use the bigger trucks. Man, this is really tight in here. Let's go to the right, maybe. Uh, I'll be right back. The whole area is one big rock garden. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I know that, that comment was probably five minutes ago, but I haven't got a chance to read it. Um, I need to get some work done in Maine. Have fun. See you next time. Sounds good, Super Kiwi. Thanks for stopping in. Have a good rest of your night, and see you later. Season 5 is where you get the Tatra Forest and Tatra Phoenix. Yes, that is correct, South Fang. I can't wait to get those trucks. That's uh, coming up for us. Somewhat soon. Still a bit away, but also somewhat soon. Let's see, I think we... yeah, we... I don't know. Probably go down to the ice, I guess. Not tried the Force or Phoenix. Hoping to soon. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, uh, the Phoenix actually is surprisingly, like, I didn't think it was going to be as good as the Forest for some reason, I guess. I just thought the Forest was more of an off-road, the Phoenix was more of a highway, like, kind of vehicle. I don't know why I thought that, but that's just what I had in my head, I guess. And, uh, yeah, the Forest is, the Forest is good, but the Phoenix is probably a little bit better off-road. Although the Phoenix can't have a crane and a bed, so that's kind of a bummer. I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't go down here. Not a good way around this, is there? Maybe I'll ride the edge here. But yeah, I remember thinking like, oh, the Force is better than the Phoenix for a long time. But I just didn't really use the Phoenix because it doesn't have a crane. And then uh, I watched some videos on the Phoenix, like, kind of like testing videos. Sort of to see like the, you know, s the speed and how good it did and this this and that. And it actually did really good and I was like, huh, I guess I, I've, I've underused that truck, so... Alright. 
think we might actually be able to get back to the road. Not, uh, not the best of paths. Oh, should I hit in the tree? I am. Darn it. Thought I might be able to turn it, turn it, or back up and turn around in here. Not that way. There we go. Now I should be able to hit this gap. Uh, JJ, you may have known this already, but changing or changing your controller control from the control to steering may help with the driving of the fem. Oh yeah, that is a good good point. The uh, the steering will uh, sort of reset back to the middle if you have uh, I think it's I think it's steering wheel that does that, or maybe it's controller. I forget which one, but uh, yeah, you can switch it from basically. If you turn right, it'll stay right, but the other one is like, if you turn right and then let go, it'll shift right back to the middle. Like, back to, uh... Yeah, I guess right in the middle would make sense. Um... It was part of the year two pass. It was separate... It was... It's one of separate vehicle DLCs worth buying. Okay. Am I wrong that it was... Oh, it was part of the year two pass. Okay, there, never mind. I had to reread that. Um, yeah, Phoenix surprised me. I slapped the fuel add-on, drive it around the wilderness, has support. Yeah, the fuel the uh, fuel add-on is one of the biggest ones in the game. So, fuel add-on on the Tatra Force, or Phoenix, well, both of them, I guess, makes them uh, really good fuel trucks. I'm surprised to hear that. Sounds good. I like the look. Feels more like a European truck with the cab overs, definitely. Or, yeah. Um, we need more cab overs. I agree. Some more of the old old style cab overs would be would be fun. I guess the newer ones would be cool too. I'm just I'm more of a fan of the older ones. When is the new truck coming? Supposed to be early April, so any time in the next I, I mean I would say from April first to the fourteenth, because it's the first half of the month. But I would honestly say probably like the first to the 7th, 8th, ninth, something like that. I don't know what, what days those fall on. But that would be my guess. Alright, I think I'm going to throw this out here. We'll come back and grab it when we come back through. But now it's like on the side of the road. It might help on the Antarctic as well. I mean, it probably helps on all the vehicles. So I know it if you're just turning with some of these ones, it resets so it goes back quicker. Makes your turning a little bit faster, I guess you could say. Alright, I probably should refuel this thing before I attempt to do more stuff. Because we're also probably running out of fuel up there. Eh, maybe not. That one looks like it's fairly close. I could probably get that one. We'll go try. Snowrunner took me 250 hours to platinum. Mudrunner took me about 200. Wow. I think I'm still missing some trophies on Snowrunner. Which is kind of funny because, you know, I've played it so much, but... I don't know. I'm not really... Like, sometimes I am an achievement hunter, but sometimes I'm not. It kind of just depends. I guess this is one of the games where I'm not. But... I haven't really... Like... I know the platinum means you have all the other trophies. I haven't really platinumed many games. I would say probably like seven total ever. So I'm not not really a platinum person, I guess. Okay, let's go up here. I want to see you play Wreckfest. Would be funny to see madly calm. Yeah, everybody always says that. I have, like, a really calming, uh, demeanor or something, but... I've also been- I've also been told it's, like, a, a bad thing as far as, like... Oh, something really bad happened, I'm just like, yeah, okay, well... Like, I kind of just... 
what are you going to do about it, you know? So, they're like, oh, you're just emotionless. I'm like, well, it's not emotionless. I just, I don't know, try not to let the highs get too high and the lows get too low, you know? Just uh, deal with whatever hand you're dealt, sort of. Alright, actually, that wasn't bad at all. First one was much worse. Way tucked back in the trees. Okay, let's pack that. Yeah, I mean, on, on our American side, we have a couple of really good trucks for, like, refueling and stuff like that. Mainly the CAT 770G, but we have a lot of American trucks, or North American, I should say. So, like, I feel like we have enough trucks to do, like, everything that we need to do. Whereas on the Russian side, we only have nine total trucks. So, like, I mean, our, our probably best case fuel truck right now is the Warthog. And that's not a great fuel truck. I mean, it, it's nice for a small fuel truck, but when it only holds 600 liters to like run there and back every time is kind of annoying you know we could use like the step or the dan or something actually yeah i think the dan has fuel tank but we could use a bigger truck but it would just mean that we don't we'd have one less truck to use in our fleet because we don't really use the small trucks for single slot cargoes anyways i guess i could put the Acteon on it but I currently have that equipped with a single slot and a crane to sort of pick up some of the smaller ones. Yeah, the Acteon holds 900, Warthog is 600. But the, the Acteon can have both the, uh, the autonomous winch and it can have a crane in single slot. So if you're going to put a single slot on one of the trucks, like, it makes more sense to put the single slot on the Acteon, but it also makes more sense to have the fuel tanker on the Acteon. You know what I mean? So, the Acteon's just more worth it no matter which way you use it, kind of. I don't know if that makes much sense, but... So yeah, for us, we don't really have a good fuel tanker on the Russian side yet. Which means fuel is kind of a pain. I think I'm just going to steal a little bit of fuel out of the, the Zik 605R quick. I think I'm going to run that down here and see... Well, actually, we'll see how much fuel I have in it. Uh, Mr. Level Emotion JJ. <laughs> While you use the controller, you can still change the settings. Yeah, that's true. You can. Um, let's... Where is it? Okay, this one's almost full. Yeah, we have tons of fuel in this. All right. You're not emotionless. You're chill. I like that. But yeah, there's, there's been times where people are like, aren't you happy? You know, you got this or that or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm happy. Why? Like, you don't seem happy. I'm like, well, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, just chilling, I should say. Just chilling. But no, I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Or like, aren't you sad? Like, yeah, it's kind of sad, but like, what are you going to do about it? So, try to stay uh, fairly level. I think that's helpful. Oh, we're sliding. All right, let's refuel that truck all the way then. Perfect. Breakfast took you 70 hours. Alright, I did platinum when there are base on playing. Jeez, we are sliding really bad. When it's skill based, less caught a racing game, I don't do it. Okay. When they ask to be the top 1% in time trials, it's just impossible. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but like. Yeah, why, who would want to do that? Like, j 
just to get the trophy. I understand some people want to do it just to get that, to be like, well, yeah, I did, I practiced enough to get to that 1%, you know, like now I have the platinum, but there's somewhere it's like, you know, maybe if it said like, oh, get a, you know, say a good time was like under 135 or something, if they're like, get a time under 130, you know, you're like, oh, well, I practiced enough to shave off seven seconds. Yeah, it makes sense, so. But yeah, when it's like, get into the top 1%, well, the 1% is getting tougher and tougher almost daily because there's n new times posted, you know? So yeah, those ones I don't really think are good, uh... Good achievements or trophies. Gotta go for your meeting. Have a good evening, JJ. Sorry, Mateo, I did not see that earlier. Thank you for stopping in. Have a good rest of your night. Maybe see you again soon. Hope to come back if there's time. Sounds good. Yeah, I use it as a fuel truck. Warthog has repair on for me. Okay, that's a good way to do it. So I currently have my Dan set up as the uh, repair truck, because that can have the, the crane in the single slot still. But I might adopt your combo in a while. I think once I get the Forest and Phoenix, I might run the Phoenix as the tanker. Kind of like, uh, I think it might have been you that said that earlier. But use the Phoenix as a tanker, the Forest with a crane and a, a two-slot bed, and then I can change the Acteon out. Oh, the Trials. Yeah, the Trials are, I, I think they're fun, but they're definitely hard. There's some hard ones that are extremely frustrating. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I did beat all of them. I think they should add more of them. I know it's something probably most people don't like, but I thought they were fun. A little bit of a challenge to the game, you know? Not just uh, the normal SnowRunner stuff, it's kind of... S you know, specific objectives. Go here, rescue this vehicle, or whatever you gotta do. Breakfast took you 70 hours, I think I read that one. Level head prevails, that's why you're the master. Thank you, Rex. Appreciate that. Difficulty finishing the race. Why don't you use the 612H? It has literally everything. That's pretty much why I don't use it. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't... The, the 612H is way too loud. It's super annoying. Um, I also don't like the... The amount of add-ons is kind of... Like, it's, it's nice, but I kind of said this earlier, if all trucks had all of these add-ons or, like, the same stuff, like, none of the trucks would be different, and then it would just be kind of boring. So I kind of like trucks that only have specific things. Like, for example, the, the cargo carrier on the cat. No other trucks has the cargo container carrier, so that's, like, a really cool, unique add-on. So, like, whenever I have a chance on normal mode, I always try and use it, and I did it on hard mode as well. Like, I, I bought the add-on specifically to use for that, like, it was a bad waste of money. Or not waste of money, but bad use of money. But I thought it was really cool, so... Um, yeah, I don't really like using the, the Mastodon much, but on our hard mode, the reason we're not using it is because we're not buying vehicles. Otherwise, I probably would buy it and play it around with it for a little bit for you guys, just to, you know, show off the truck. Like, that's why, that's kind of what my normal mode is for, to play with all the trucks you guys want to see. And then the hard mode is more, more of these less capable trucks that are just more fun to use, in my opinion. Because, yeah, if you have everything on the truck, I mean, you could just drive back, change out the add-ons, drive back. Or I guess you can just recover in that case. Recover back, change the add-ons, recover it again, change the add-ons, but... I don't know. I, I enjoy using different trucks for different things. I like. Hey, I'm staying for as long as I usually will. Stop by later. Sounds good, Artem. Thanks for stopping in. Have a good rest of your night, and maybe see you later. Uh, but what was I saying? Kind of lost track of where I was. Something about all the add-ons. Yeah, maybe it'll come back to me. What map are we on? We are on Urska River in Amir. I remember this consumable rolled after picking this one up. Didn't realize how steep the slope was. Yeah, I kind of almost did that. I saw my truck start to roll and I was like, oh gosh, here we go. You only do the time trial to get set up from other guys? I'm confused. I only do time trial to get set... Oh, like in racing games? What off-road truck high saddle from American side 
to use for hauling the big special rigs in Alaska. I would use the P-16, but that's not uh, off-road. For off-road, you I mean, early on, so if you're in Alaska, probably something like the 5070 on the American side. Uh, but yeah, I use pretty much the P-16 for all the big, the big hulls. Just because, I mean, this is from my, my experience and maybe your guys' will be different, but for all of the big hauls, pretty much the main hang-up for me is always the trailer legs. It's not that the truck, like, lacks power or it's getting hung up on this or that by the fender or the, you know, the front bumper or, you know. It's almost always the trailer legs for me. So, oops. I didn't mean to do that either. So I prefer to use the truck with the highest saddle that I can get, pretty much. Which, in your case, would be the P-16. Because the, the Boar is a very high saddle truck. And um, the Kenworth, the Fem, P-16, those are some of the highest... I think those are the top four, actually. But... Yeah, th those are those are what I would probably use, just because I don't like getting hung up on stuff by the trailer legs. Uh, obviously, the Fem is uh, based on a Russian truck, so that one wouldn't work for you. Oops. Alright. I do have to go... I will run upstairs for like one minute, guys. You can time it. I'll be back in like a minute. Okay, hang on. Alright, we are back, so, um, I'm in not for a long time, realize I messed up. All trucks are useful, all have, all has a strong suit and weakness, yeah, there you go, Lonnie. All the trucks have something they're good at. Some of them, their best thing might still be uh, worse than other trucks, like, I don't know, say a uh, Transtar as a fuel tanker. Probably gonna get beat out as a fuel tanker by other trucks, right? 55 seconds. You actually timed it, Rex. Funny guy. Have you done Yukon yet? Yes, we have completed Yukon. We did that a few, uh, must have been two, three months ago, a few months back. I understand a lot of people are here. Hard to keep track of all the conversations. <laughs> Uh, if you read at the top, if you read from the top, sorry, if you read from the top to bottom, my comment would make more sense. Oh, I must have missed your other one. It means nothing because the time trial and the track, the car, the tire, yeah, I got you now, okay. Yeah, sorry, I didn't even see that one spoon. So it's just uh, completely missed on my end. What do you guys prefer, Zix 605R or Zix 612H? That's a good question. I think many people know my answer, 605R, 100% of the time. But no, there there are some things that the uh, the Zix can do that the Zix or the the 612H can do that the 605R can't, just based on the amount of add-ons it has. So I mean, if you're gonna say, oh, well, it's I don't know, long logging, like the. Uh, the 612H can have the crane and the long log, so that, like, you know, makes that a little easier. I think the Zix 612H can also have mediums, which the 605R cannot. So there's some things the one truck can do that the other one would be, like, completely written off for, but 
If you're just talking in general, I'd take the 605R every time over the 612H personally. P16 is a beast and it has the highest saddle, yep. It's kind of funny because I remember when the Femme came out, I was like, oh, this one has to have the highest saddle because this Kenworth is so close on its 69 inch tires. I was like, with these 71s, because I mean, you could run 71s on the uh, on the Kenworth, but you're just you're running all terrains instead of muds. So it's it's kind of up to you if you want the traction. But um, sometimes that actually is better because you slip slip a little bit rather than just locking up your tires. But uh, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, so the the Fem with their 71s probably going to beat out the 69s and the Kenworth. Surprisingly, no. For some reason, the, the Fem's saddle, even with 71-inch tires, is for some reason shorter. It's kind of odd. But yeah, like Saki said, depends what you do. Personally, I am a bigger fan of the 605R, so that would be my my go-to. Okay, log crane makes me go crazy, really. I know a lot of people don't like it. I've said it many times. I actually like logging. I, I say the log crane is a little bit finicky. Like it's, you know, you push it right, it, it flings right real quick or something, but you kind of get used to it. I don't mind it. Like it, it definitely could be better, but it's not too bad. You did, you did better than me. I tried to cut across the slope instead of driving down after picking up the consumables. <laughs> Drum ensued. I can totally relate to that, Daniel, because I almost flipped it. Like, I start, I see, started seeing it go, and I'm like, oh, crap. This hill, exactly what you said, is a little bit more of an angle than I thought it was. Didn't look that bad. All right, I guess we got to go over here. That's not good. I don't know if I like this at all. I guess I'll take it, but not a fan. It's worrying me. First time I've ever done that. I'll load all the logs. My P16 goes in every map with me. I know a lot of people don't like the P16 because it can lack power, but for me, it's it's fine. It, it it's good enough for the most part. Like it did struggle on a couple of deliveries in Yukon or no Wisconsin. We had to go really like steeply up hills. For the most part, it was fine. It got the job done. Let's pack this one. There we go, 4,000. Not too bad. Alright, so now the question is... Because I gotta go all the way up here, start that task, and then I know it spawns in a cargo container like in the river here. So, I don't think I'm gonna have enough fuel. I know that truck is flipped over and doesn't have much fuel. I think I gotta... Wait, where's my where's my heck, or uh, warthog at anyways? Oh, it's up there. So yeah, I probably should run this back and get some more fuel because we're almost out. Ugh, bummer. Hmm. I'm trying to think, because if I take the Acteon, yeah, I guess I'll take the Acteon back this way with the fuel tank to the garage, and I can bring this truck up up here and then just fuel it from a, the Zix or something. You don't like the P-16 very much? You're using Russian trucks in, excuse me, instead? That's fair. I mean, I don't really like the P-12. So people say the P-16 lacks power. I, I've seen it at times, but the P-12, like, that thing can barely climb a lot of hills. Like, that one bothers me.
Like, I would like to use the P12 more, but it's just, it's not, not very good for me. This is probably way too heavy. Oh, gosh. Okay. Maybe we'll just drag it. <laughs> oh, come on. I hate it when they do this where it's like it doesn't want to attach to the front of it to turn to grab it. It's like, come on. Even when you're so close, it doesn't want to grab the front. There we go. Greetings from Greece. Well, hello. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, P12 needs some love from the devs. Let's turn the... Oops. I will drive on. P12 is a good fuel tank. Oh, man, I can't... I can't imagine that would be a good fuel tank at all. I just feel like it's way too weak. Uh, the dairy will pull the big rig trailers in Alaska, no problem. Oh, sorry, I think I saw somebody had mentioned that when I was I had come back. Something about the dairy. Dairy and high saddle, I think. <laughs> Actia and stability, yeah. A little bit lacking. Uh, crane or service truck is not really good for off-roader. Oh, like an on-road fuel tanker? Maybe, yeah. Uh, Okay, I had two trailers of medium logs near the substation and didn't want to take two trips. The only reason why I was using a log crane. Oh, okay. P16, know how to use your gearbox. I find off-road is best for it. Really? You like off-road over advanced special? Did I miss anything? It's easier to come up from the other side, says Daniel. Oh, from the right side? Oh, like go all the way around and come up. Yeah, I, I gotcha. I, I know you're talking about that other island over there where I was at. I'm saying a truck you can park it and forget it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought after I read the rest of it. Again, Spoon. Forgettable truck. I rage sold the P12 in Wisconsin after a soft suspension and weak engine. I remember I used it because... I opened up, like, when I played Season 11, I was like, well, I'll use whatever truck you guys want to use. You pick the truck, pick the mission, we'll go do it. And somebody picked uh, the P-12, and they wanted us to do... I think it was logs. I'm pretty sure it was even long logs. And I was climbing up. It wasn't the snow slope, but it was to that top part. I was coming up the, the top right corner of the map, and it just bogged down. It was stuck in a bunch of mud, and there was a big steep hill in front of me and I'm like, dude, this is ridiculous. This thing can't even move. Like, I, I can't do anything. And so I actually ended up giving up. I was like, screw this. I'm just going to go get a different truck. I don't remember what I used, but I was like, I'm not going to... Because it took me like an hour to move like 30 yards. I was like, I'm not going to keep doing this. This is going to take forever. I'll use the truck again, but not for this one. <laughs> so I, I brought out something else and just finished it off. And that's when I... Like, I knew the P-12 wasn't great for a lot of stuff, but that was when I really realized, I was like, yeah, this thing is just not good. Like, some of the logs, like, it's good for other things, but it's just not good for this. So I was like, this is, this is really bad. Can't keep doing this. Like, I remember using it back in Michigan and stuff, and it was fine. But I think Michigan, the roads are much more solid. So they kind of, it's, it's kind of the difference between this and Expeditions. It's like... The roads here you really can sink in, not roads even, but just like on the Mudrunner maps you can really sink in, whereas on Expeditions your, your tires just kind of glide across the surface, sort of like this, where they just, they do make some indents, but it's, overall the terrain is really solid, and so that's kind of the same thing. So the P12 kind of just glid, glided, glid, I don't know what the, the past tense for glide, glided I guess. It glided across the surface. Glid. Me and my English. 
uh, it glided across the surface and just kind of, uh, you know, didn't, didn't really get hung up in Michigan very much. But yeah, when I was using it in season 11, it was like just super bogged down going up a mountain. Like, not even, it was probably something like this. Just like a little bit of a slope. It turned at the top, there's some mud. Oh. For some reason my engine shuts off when I'm using the steering wheel and I don't know why. It does it like once an hour or so. But yeah, I wouldn't say I rage sold it, but I definitely like rage quit. Or not even rage quit, but I was just like, I'm not gonna keep doing this. This is gonna take way too long. Your English is best. Uh, I know logs near a small house up the hill, even the Tatra struggle on that hill. That might have been what it was. Might have been that one. But yeah, I was like, dude, this is not going to work. I spent like an hour and moved almost nowhere. So I think I actually I think I might have brought out the P512PF as the log truck after that. I don't remember what I used, but I think that kind of sounds right. Oh, shoot. We're in the ditch. Uh oh, I guess we got to stay in here. Because getting out's probably gonna flip us. There we go. Yeah, we definitely gotta make a fuel run after this then. Like, maybe we'll make it to the end of this stream with this. We can fill up the, uh... Fill up the 605R all the way, and then the, the Step 310E all the way, but then we're out of fuel in this. We're out of fuel in the, uh, Warthog. We're basically out of fuel in... Pretty much all of our trucks, to be honest. Oh gosh, no. Yep. Alright. You're back. What's up with season 13? Uh, I made a video about season 13 a couple days ago, sometime last week, with some uh, some news that I hadn't covered yet. So it it was out for probably a week before I made the video, but um, season 13 BTS should be coming out. Or I keep saying should. The goal for them is to come out by the end of the month. So yeah, season 13, hopefully, at the end of the month. And if it's not the end of the month, it's probably going to be early next month, so... When I put the parking brake on, why am I sliding down? Okay, let's refuel. And then how much did I have left in this step? 52%, so not too terribly bad, I guess. Hey, Redneck, how are you doing? Welcome back to the stream. I think I'll go back across the river and go that way. But yeah, the uh, season 13, they're hoping to get it out by the end of the month. And then uh, the Azov Atom truck, they're hoping to have that out early April. So end, end of March for season 13 on PTS, and then early April for the Atom truck. And the last four or so PTSs, have lasted for about six weeks. Almost six weeks exactly for all of them. Uh, so I would expect the game to come out, or the season 13 to fully release about two months from now would be my best guess.
I hate how expensive boots are. I spent over $300 on a pair of Saturday. Ouch. Did you, uh, did you get reimbursed from the company or did you have to pay for it all out of pocket? I know boots are ridiculous. Are they like waterproof, slip resistant, like steel toe, all that stuff? Wait, where am I going? Yeah, I guess that's fine, whatever. I'll go down the road just a bit more. So we'll have to run out some fuel to ourselves here in a bit. Oops. Threw on the parking brake by accident. That rock just does not want to get out. There we go. Oh, they weren't work boots. Okay. I just assumed they were work boots. What kind of boots are they? They should have all that and have gold tips. There you go. And they, act they make some, like... Or maybe I'm wrong, but I thought they make boots that are, like, electrical resistant or something. Like, they don't have steel toe. Maybe they have, like... I could be wrong on this, but I think they have, like, steel, and then under it they have, like, plastic or something. So if you drop something and you, you happen to, like, scuff your boots up a bit or something, um, you'll, instead of just being uh, metal, it'll be, like, plastic or, I don't know, something like that. So you have more, more resistance against being electrocuted or something like that. Maybe I'm just uh, totally wrong, but... Anti-static? Okay, maybe that was it. I go through work boots almost every three months. Ouch. Forty-one W thirty-six. Hang on. Hit the like button. It's free. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. How much is left in this tank, anyways? 228. You're right, JJ, about the boots? Yeah, I know there's something like that. I don't know. Like you said, maybe they're anti static, and I don't know the. Uh I don't know if that's the, the right term I should have been using, but something like that, I, I don't know. Trust me, I'm no boot expert. The gold tips would be cool. And I've heard gold's not a great conductor of electricity, so, you know, maybe that would, uh, would kind of work out, right? And then you could sell them when you're done, have little gold gold flakes falling off all over the floor. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to go on a fuel run at the end of this, so... I think the plan is we're going to fuel up the step. That'll go up and do... What is it called? There's one mission way in the top. I can't remember the name of it. Car... No, Cargo Cult's the one we just did. Um, let me see. Close... No. Unlucky... Wait, no, it's... I keep cra... Uh, means of production. There we go. Um, we'll do means of production. We'll have to go get a cargo container and deliver that. Then we'll flip over the TUS 166. We'll do the contest. Then we'll probably go get fuel with the Warthog. We'll probably drive the Acteon, uh, Acteon back to the halfway point. And then we'll go fuel up uh, the Acteon. Or the, the Warthog and uh, the trailer here. Actually, you know what? I might just do both. I might I might throw the add-on onto this one. Let me turn on the lights here. 
When is the next Amir stream? I think I'm going to do it every other day, Daniel. So I'll probably switch back and forth between this and Expeditions because I'm trying to get that done. So that when there's new content for either game, I can just jump right into the new stuff. So uh, probably Wednesday and Friday we'll do uh, SnowRunner. And then next week would probably be Tuesday, Thursday, and just every other day, basically. So yeah, for this week, Wednesday. Two days. Alright, gotta slow down a bit so we don't flip here. Already done that plenty of times. It's dark so fast. It's like light, and then the next thing you know, it's just dark. But yeah, I think I'm gonna throw the fuel tank on the Acteon. I don't know if I've ever bought it with this one or not. I think I'll buy it and we'll... We'll use it in this truck. I don't know. I'm trying to think because the uh, the crocodile can also use it. The Zix 5368 can use it, but we won't ever get either of those. Those are trucks you have to buy. Rex doesn't love me anymore. I said hi. He said nothing. I must have missed that as well. Electrician boots basically ground so you don't get zapped. Okay. Let's refuel, throw the rest of it in there. Wait, we still have 70 liters extra? Dang. I think I might do this one and then just leave the truck here for a bit. So that when we uh, when we do come back, we can take the last 40 liters out of there. Hello, Gordon. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today, Gordon? Oh, and what I should have also said is we'll probably try and get the last, the third rocket part here if we can. Oh, we're slipping. So once we do this one and flip back over the TUS 166, we'll go grab some fuel and then if we have time we can do the rocket part. Maybe we'll get there and start moving it, but we'll see how far we actually get. Uh, so far so good. Nothing real bad has happened. We crashed a few times, took some damage, but nothing, oops, nothing too major. Uh, we lost the cargo right at the start of the stream, but that uh, had a crane on it, so we were able to throw that right back in. Other than that, yeah, that, everything's been going pretty good. Oh, we, we flipped over the Tuz 166, I guess. Uh, so that's not good. I uh, did the contest on the lake, and we were flying around, and then all of a sudden we hit breakable ice, and the truck just, the front end sunk into the breakable ice and just back end flew up and over. So... No good with that, but we're about to go rescue it because we're going to go up here, start a task, go off to the right a little bit to the east. It's right on this lake. You might be able to see it out there. No, it's too dark. Um, I'm going to pause this. Is it to the left? It is to the left. Okay. It's been a long time since I've been down this. If you don't hit, or if you don't hit the sub or like button, you have to use the stock con loaf for the next one week at Snow Hunter. Yeah, everyone likes to joke with me that the con loaf is the best truck in the game, especially in my expeditions streams. Mm -hmm. 
I know it's kind of like an, an ongoing joke throughout the community, but... I like to say it's the worst truck in the game, even though it's not. Just because everyone else likes to say it's the best one. <laughs> Which, it's not. It's neither. But... Oops. Ah, uh, there we go. Hello, Caleb. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today, Caleb? JJ, you, me, and Zing all know that the loaf is not to be joked with. It's fun to drive. If you guys have drove it on expeditions with the middle engine and a lot of stuff on it, I'm gonna be honest, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Zing says it's good with the top engine, which I haven't tried it with that one. I, don't, I didn't have it. Again, this is Expeditions, a little bit different, but it was really bad. It couldn't make it up like any of the hills. The game needs cruise control. You're doing good? Awesome, glad to hear that. I've probably only ever been back here like one time. I don't remember... I mean, I remember picking the mission up. Because I remember doing this one, but I don't remember really ever coming back here. I probably should have used a small truck for this. This is taking forever. We're just sitting and spinning. Let's see if we can get out of the road here, maybe. Possibly speed it up. There we go. That should help. Ah, crap. I think we're stuck on the tree. There we go. I'm thinking we'll try to skirt around the edge of this thing. Probably the best terrain. Uh, anyways, it's really good because it can flip back almost every truck in SnowRunner. Yeah, I'd say it's a decent scout. It's not it's not terrible, but everyone likes to kind of joke around that it's the best one. Or at least in my community, so I like to joke around that it's the worst one. Although now that I said that, I'm trying to think. Like, I'm kind of going through them, like, which one would be worse than the loaf? Like, if you had to, you know, in totality, which one would be worse? Because there's some of them which would be better in certain areas, like, just as an example, the TH357's got bigger tires. And if you take off the forks, it's a pretty good scout, but, like, would I rather have the loaf over that thing? Yeah, definitely. So I don't know which, which trucks would be, uh... Like, if you were to compile a list, sort of like a... I guess a tier list of trucks, which ones, which scout trucks would be worse? Or I guess even just overall trucks, Don 71. I mean, the Sprinter for sure. Sprinter would be worse. I mean, the Sprinter can't even tow a trailer. It's almost good for nothing. It's got 50 extra spare parts, I think, total. You don't have much experience with the loaf? Neither do I. My right trigger finger is twice as strong as my left. Yeah, the, the brake versus the gas. It has the smallest tires in the game, I think. I'm trying to think. I used to have a list on my phone of like a bunch of that stuff. I believe the Gore 71, or Gore by 4, why did I say the Gore 71? I mixed the two. I believe the Gore by 4 and. Uh, CJ7, if I'm not wrong, had 29 inch tires. But I believe if you go, if you went by the, the maximum amount, I think every truck has 31s at the... Oops, why am I turning around? Oh, this is the task, okay. Oops. 
accept the task. There we go. Yeah, I think the CJ7 can have 29 inch, and I think the Gore by 4 might be the same. But I think if you if you include like the biggest size any truck can run, I think they're both 31s. And I think there might even be I want to say the Land Rover might be there as well. I is like I said, I I had this all written down like in my phone as different notes, and I lost all that information. I mean, I could look it back up, but I kind of had my own lists of stuff. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but the musketeers are getting bad down here in Louisiana. I went outside for 10 minutes, got at least 20 bites. And the musketeers? Is that like the Elon Musk family or something? No, I'm just kidding. The mosquitoes. Alright, we are stuck. That's what it looked like when I read it the first time. Because I, I look over quick, and it's just whatever I see. Mosquitoes, yeah. It looked like musketeers when I looked over there. I'm like, musketeers? Like, what is that? I, I assume that's what you meant, but I was kind of poking fun at it at first. Three mosquitoes. Well, I don't think there's uh, very many mosquitoes where I live right now, because uh, just last night it was like 20 degrees, and it's not super cold, but like a little bit too cold for them to be around yet. This has been fun, friends. Have a good night. Hope to see you tonight on my stream. Ooh, guys, Rex is streaming tonight. What, Rex, what are you streaming? What game? Oh, and when are you going to start streaming? Have you ever fly in SnowRunner? Yeah, I have. Um, I have a video on it, actually. If you look up... I think I titled it like, Hey, You Can't Park There or something. Um, I parked in a wrong spot on Season 10 when you complete something. And it built the building into my truck, and my truck just went flying. I've done it a few times. I remember one time I was playing with a friend, and... I don't even know what happened, honestly. I just remember my truck was, like, way up in the air, flipping around. I don't remember if I, like, left and came back and it happened, or if I did something. I just remember, like, telling them, hey, look at this truck. And they look at it on the map, and it was just, like, freaking out way up in the air. Oh, you're going to start doing the Highway Holland region. Nice. Is that the newer one, the Highway Holland 2? I don't know if it's new, but I know you said there's a, somebody said there's a newer one. Later X, I'll try my best to pop in. 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock Mountain, 6 o'clock Pacific. I don't know the rest of the time zones. But yeah, Rex is going to be playing some Highway Holland if you guys are interested in checking that out later. That's, uh, what? About 4 hours, 15 minutes from now? Man, this is so slow in here. Like, we fueled up all the way before we left. And we've only gone down the road just a little bit, and we've already used up 100 liters. It's pretty crazy. I definitely need some bigger fuel trucks. Okay, let's see. I think I'll just drive it down and drop off the last 40, and then we'll go fuel it up.
I'm trying to think, like, do I have enough fuel to get all the way back to there or not, though? I don't know. I might need that last 40 just to get to the fuel station. Oops. Peace and love. Yeah, sorry, Rex, I didn't even tell you goodbye. You're probably gone by now. Um, but yeah, thanks for stopping in, and see you later, Rex. Have a good rest of your night, if you do end up rewatching it or something. There we go. Now I think we're good. We're on the last uh, bad bump of these this set here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to add a fuel tank on this one. Maybe just temporarily, but... Only fueling up like 1,500 liters at a time. With the, uh, the 900 in this tank, plus the 600 in the Warthog is... Well, taking a lot of time. Really, we're just sliding down the hill. God, the fuel tank is just stuck there. All right, whatever. Where's the step quick? Let's grab the, the rest of the fuel. Like I said, I don't know if, we, uh, if we're going to be able to make it all the way to the fuel station or not, but we do have the Sentinel down there, actually, so we should be able to make ourselves limp the rest of the way in if we need to. Wait, what did I just do? Oh, I s stole a little bit more fuel than I wanted to. Not good. Yeah, we'll fuel that all the way up. Dawn 71 is the best. Um, you say I should play some more ATS since I have a wheel now. Yeah, I don't have a lot of the DLCs for ATS, so it's it's kind of sort of plain. I have, uh, I believe, just California, Arizona. I think I might have one more, but I th also think that might just be it. So it's kind of uh, basically the same roads over and over because it's like Wait, no, I think I might... What is... I think I have Nevada and Arizona. That's it. I have three. I forget about this ice road here. Probably should have gone the other way, to be honest. Okay. I mean, I guess I still could go back. They're doing a rework for Cali soon? Nice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have just three maps, so it's like a lot of the same roads. You know, if I go from like Arizona to California or California back to Arizona, it's like normally it tells you to go on the same route. Like, yeah, you could go on different ones, but... It, it kind of doesn't really make sense to go on too many different routes, unless you get orders to go to, like, a, a farm or something. You know what I mean? So I'm basically traveling the same few roads over and over. Until I get more maps, I probably won't play it too often. But I do enjoy some ATS. I do enjoy the deliveries.
Okay, I think it's just off the bridge here. I think we can see the cargo container right there. Are you still, uh, are you playing? I know you said you, you're going phases, uh, Tank Baby, with ATS. Are you playing ATS right now? I finally remember to put on my anchors that time. That's where it can just like float through the bridge, huh? I was trying to avoid the bridge. Hey, you're messing with mods? Okay, I gotta read the rest of that comment in just a second. Restore grain, stop the engine, let's track the task. Means of production, there we go. So yeah, it's not too far away actually. Hey, sorry, phone died. Didn't hear your response. What is your favorite mission in SnowRunner? I don't think I actually read that comment either. Might have been uh, a little bit, a little bit behind at the reading the comments or something at the time, because I don't, I don't even remember seeing that one pop up. Sometimes I look over and I kind of see them, and I'm like, okay, I'll get back to that in just a second. Let me do this. But other times it's just going too quickly that I don't. I shouldn't say going too quickly, but I'm too distracted sometimes as well. Sometimes it is too quickly. Um, but I don't remember seeing that one. So, favorite mission in SnowRunner. Um, that's a pretty tough one. I don't know. That is a very, very good question. I mean, probably, just from the uh, nostalgic point of view, probably one of the Michigan, like those, the big, the first construction rig trailer that you carry in Michigan out of Black River. I think that was pretty fun. That's probably my favorite, just because it was like, you know, you, you barely have any trucks, you don't have any upgrades, and I remember getting really stuck on it the first time I played through. I took it over a little bump and got super stuck and didn't know anything, and yeah, just a good time. So maybe that one. Didn't read my comments, sad face. Yeah, I, I must have missed, I, I didn't even remember seeing it, so I guess it's a, probably a good good time for your phone to die. Uh, but, and you're messing with mods, though keeps it, because it keeps crashing every time I try to select a delivery. Oh wow, that's a bummer. It has to be log logging in Yukon. Hmm. I'm trying to think like, oh shoot, where am I going? I'm going the right way again. So I do enjoy logging, but like, favorite mission, I don't know. That's where it gets me, because it's like, it's gotta be something that I would I would do over and over and over. Like I would do the logging, but some like if you pick a really big logging contract, I don't want to have to do like 20 of them over and over and over. Like maybe if it's like a two or three logging missions and you do it over and over, yeah, it's not bad, but if it's like 20, that's kind of too much. Um but yeah, I, I actually do I like logging quite a bit. And I don't mind using the logging crane loading it up either. I did really like delivering the fishing boat in season 10 too. I thought that was really fun. Even though that one was like a super easy delivery. Because it was almost like tar roads the entire way there. 
I spent all of last night trying to fix the damn game from crashing because I spent a few dollars on a mod truck. Or mod trailer, sorry. I really enjoyed the logging mission where you brought two trucks and tandem trailers to get all the logs. Uh, which, which one was that? Or just saying in general, like the ones that are big enough to do like a bunch of logs. For me, it's pulling the big trailer through the Alaskan mud pit. Nice. Connected everything together, got it in one run. I remember one of my earlier videos of SnowRunner, this was like way back before I had any kind of viewership. I probably had like 100 subscribers at the time. I made a video in Alaska where I, I, I had two long log trucks, like two, two loads of long logs, and I parked them on a lake. And it was actually like, it was ice that you can't fall through, but you can actually sink into. I didn't know that was a thing. It's like the dark blue ice, if you sit there, you actually sink into it. And my truck started like sinking in. That was uh, interesting, I didn't know that at the time. I can actually show you um, where it was. Let's go back to Alaska Northport. Right here. I think it was, it was either, I'm pretty sure it was on this part, but it might have been this. This is like black ice, but it's not breakable, but if you sit there long enough with a heavy enough load, you'll sink in. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't know you could do that, so that's kind of caught me off guard. I had two huge long log trucks and I, I remember I was driving and I was like going across the mud, right? And then I'm like, oh, okay, here's some ice and I know this ice isn't breakable. Let me park my trucks here and I'll go do whatever it was I was going to do. And yeah, I parked the trucks and they come back and they were just like sunk in. And I'm like, uh, crap. I thought this part wouldn't sink. So it was really tough to get out. I don't even remember what trucks I was using either. It was, like I said, it was a really long time ago. Probably like three, three years ago or something. Turn on your beacons, it gives you plus 20%. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, somebody said be something about beacons earlier as well. I didn't read, didn't get to see that one, uh, see the comment to read it all the way either. I just remember seeing beacons. 20% stability, 30% engine power. My favorite is the one logging I did in, in Yukon. Er, Oh yeah, the worst logging mission. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about, Lonnie. That one was bad. It took like an entire episode to get one set of long logs delivered. That was bad. That was harsh. Also, in uh, in Yukon, do you remember, Lonnie, when our, our logs fell out of the trailer but they didn't unpack? So we were dragging around a, a like super odd looking load of logs. Like, the front part stayed in, but the back part, like, jumped over the bars. You have to go now. Sounds good, B-Row. Uh, have a good flippy and stucky evening. Yeah, that's pretty much the uh, extent of SnowRunner. And very slow, sluggish going. But thank you for stopping in, B-Row. B I don't know how to say your name exactly, but... Uh, have a good rest of your night, and hopefully see you again soon. We'll try not to get flipped, we'll try not to get stuck, and we'll try not to go too slow. Although it looks like we're going to run out of fuel right about the time we get this delivered, huh? Everything's so slow in here. There we go, speeding it up just a bit. Yukon had you, JJ? Yeah, but the Yukon logging got me a few times, didn't it? Bro. Try not 
trying to sneak around the edge here and hopefully not get as deep of mud. Sticking right close to everything. It's usually solid ground. There we go. All right, means of production is done. So that means we can get logs here, or uh, excuse me, take logs here to change into planks. I have no idea what they're connected to. Yeah, we got nothing to pick up, nothing to drop off. We could change any logs into wood planks. I got a question for you guys. What is your favorite moment from the seasons that we've played? Anything that we've done specifically that you guys can remember that was uh, fun. Fun, funny, frustrating to watch maybe? I don't know, whatever you wanna, however you wanna classify it. Oh man, even this is muddy. I was thinking maybe I can go off to the side and dodge the mud, but nope, not gonna happen. There we go, I was trying to get that. Oh shoot, I didn't see there's a tree right there. I was just thinking, oh yeah, now we're going pretty good right on the side here, but no, we gotta dip in back to the bad stuff. When you got the 605R stuck twice in the same spot. Yeah, that was that was bad. The first time was was my mistake, I shouldn't have done it, and the second time, I remember I was trying to guess where exactly the vibration points would be and I, I pretty much knew where they were because I've done that one a few times and so I was like I think it's somewhere around here and I was like oh crap I need fuel but should I go get fuel or should I not and I started to go over there and the person uh Zing actually I think it was was like oh you're you're gonna cheat again because I, I got the first two I think it was like right on the money both times and so they were like, oh, you're cheating. I know they were just joking around, but I was like, all right, I'll just go to, you know, see how close we can get. And I, I went the way I probably shouldn't have went. And uh, yeah, it was the same path as last time, fell in again. I'm just glad I was able to get out. I thought I probably was gonna have to recover that thing. In all seriousness, I was like, oh, great. There's my first recovery. Come on. Every single tree's breaking. There we go, what do we got? I don't know, some kind of a bigger tree. But yeah, we're definitely running out of fuel out here, that's fine I guess, nothing we can do about it. We need the rest of the fuel in the Acteon to go back and get, uh... Go back and get fuel for our other trucks, including this one I guess. That was funny, you like that? Yeah, the worst part is that it was the exact same spot. The exact same truck in the exact same spot. Like, I didn't learn my lesson the first time. I feel like challenging challenging Northern Aegis installation once again, and it, it beat me again. There we go, got the far, far big tree again, finally. Again, we're about to run out of fuel, we're just going to try and push it as far as we can. So that at least the truck is the closest it can be when we do have to refuel it. Once it starts stuttering, which it looks like it kind of is just starting now. There we go. Alright, we'll shut her off. Got two extra liters, but basically empty. Mm 
Time to go grab some more fuel. Please flip over. I don't want to drag it that way the entire way. For a lot of trucks, they just keep on going, but this one's having such troubles pulling it. I mean, maybe we're on flat ground again. Maybe I could put it back in here, but didn't really like it last time. Yep, doesn't like the fuel tanker, really. It's not even, like, the fuel tank's empty, it's just a lot of weight. This looks like an accident waiting to happen, doesn't it? Flying stick. Where do you guys think season 13 is going to take place? For anybody who uh, has seen the vehicle skins, you might have some clues about the other ones, but I don't think season 13 really gives us much. I think it's the uh, Paystar 5070. No, that's the, that's the second one, never mind. It's the uh, ANK MK38 civilian that has the uh, skin on it. Or at least I believe that's the one that's going to be season 13. I could very well be wrong. Alaska? You think they would do Alaska again? With some mining? Mining up in Alaska? Like, it's definitely possible, but... I don't think they would do the same state twice. Like, the same country? Maybe? Oh, you haven't seen the skin yet. Uh, I made a video about it, Tank Baby. Both a, a dedicated video to the skins, but then also I, I made a video the other day about some season 13... Well, just some snow in our news in general, but it touched on season 13, the uh, new Azov Atom truck some of the skins, how, you know, we might have some clues about which region might be the full snow region, because they said there's going to be a full snow region coming soon. Some of that stuff. Oh, man, we're taking some more damage here. Oh, oh. Dang it. Too slow to grab the controller. Oh, shoot, I never flipped over my truck out there on the lake either. Ah, oh, man. Dropping the ball. They used to do a lot of coal mining in Spitsbergen. That would be cool. I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. It must be a... Uh, I'm guessing a town or something up in the Norway, Finland, Sweden, 
region, Poopum, I guess. Because that's where you're from. That's why I'm guessing that. I'll go check that out real quick and get back to you. Okay, sounds good. Well, let me know. Back it up a bit. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, dang it, it didn't. I thought I was going to stay in. I was like, that's awesome. See if we can tilt the crane down. Now it's going to restore it, but I think I'll clamp down on it just to be sure again. Can't remember if I shut off this truck, did I? Yeah, okay. Actually, let me maybe pull it from the back, like this. See if that keeps it in there a little better, maybe? Keeps it towards the front. It's where all of our polar bears live. Oh, okay. But they said, well, they said season 13 is not going to be full snow. So that's why I would probably rule that one out. I don't know, they could probably do it in the summer, where it's half snow, sort of like Scandinavia was. But, I don't know, I probably would have to rule that one out, in my opinion. You're back and you still have no clue? That's funny. Which one did you watch? The uh, the skins or the uh, season third, or just, just the general snowrunner news over the last like week or two? Popping a wheelie there. And there. Uh oh. That is really, really back heavy. Yeah, that's why I doubt it. Okay. It's possible, but. It just doesn't seem likely. It could be the full snow region there, though. That's a good possibility. Season 13 news? Okay.
Pop in another wheelie. Jeez, that thing is heavy in the back. All right, we're gonna trade out the crane here. And the bed. Actually, probably, we can probably just drive right in. We'll throw it out, I guess, though. There we go. And do be cool to have a Greenland slash Iceland region. That would be pretty cool. Oh, so I did buy the small fuel carrier for this, I guess, at one point. So that's nice. Wait, does it start with fuel? Nope. Okay. I know for a while there was a bug for some reason. That when you bought it, for some reason it started with fuel. And I actually found it out because I bought it and had fuel in it and I was like, that's not right. This is hard mode. It's not supposed to do that. This thing is literally pulling me back. Hello! Back from the meeting. How's JJ doing? We're doing pretty good. Uh, I forgot to flip back over my truck, my scout truck. So... I probably should do that right now before I forget again. Gee, you just kind of reminded me, so... Let's go do that. So I have this truck out here to flip back over. This one's out of fuel. This one's, both of these have a decent amount of fuel. Same with this one, but they're kind of just need more fuel, basically. They're not, they can't really do anything until I refuel them. Like they all have a little bit of fuel to like drive to an objective, but can't really finish anything. Thousand percent Icelandic map, yes. Say, for Iceland, you would build a geothermal generator or something like that. Doesn't, uh, isn't it like... It's either Iceland or Ireland or one of those places over there. They have like the most... The most, uh, what is it? Like, underwater data centers or something in the entire world. Because the water's like really cold over there. They built it on like the ocean floor. Something like that. So that way it keeps them really cool. So something weird like that. You guys will have to like fact check me on that. I, I, I have no idea. It might be completely uh, spewing out BS. Their underwater is very hot in Iceland? Okay. Or maybe it was Greenland. I don't remember where it was. Somewhere over there, I'm pretty sure. They're building, like, underwater data centers or something to basically save on cooling, because then the ocean water just cools it for them. Not, like, actually in the, in the water, but, like, you know, in a, in a case underwater, and the case is really cold. Iceland is green, Greenland is ice. Yeah, it's funny how that works, isn't it? Here's a question for you guys, and I don't actually know the answer. How many, or which countries have land in their name? So you guys got Greenland and Iceland. I think there's like, it's either like seven or nine. And I actually, like I said, I don't know the answer. I don't remember them all, but, oh geez.
It makes sense though with the amount of water in these caves, it will take a long time to heat up so it stays cool. Yeah, like I said, I don't know if that's like if I'm actually correct on that, but I remember reading a news article a long time ago about like them building offshore like data centers or something because or maybe it was mining like uh like bitcoin mining or something i don't I, th I don't think it was that i think it was data centers ireland finland iceland greenland so that's four i think there's seven or nine i don't remember oh south Finland got finland i was wondering if someone would get that one that's the only other one i could think of right now I don't think that counts, the uh, Deutschland one, because that would be Germany. I guess maybe th that's what they refer to it as, right? I, wa I saw a YouTube short of it the other day, that's the reason why I said it. And I don't remember what, they all, what all the countries were called. Alright, let's try... yeah, whatever, we'll just go. So I'll just try to do it a bit slower this time. England? Yeah, I don't think that one counts either. I think it, it considers it to, to be the United Kingdom. But you're, you're kind of onto one there. Netherlands? Yeah, that was one. We say Tiskland, if I said that right, for Germany in my language. These rocks are huge. Thailand, that's one. Oh my gosh. Jeez, that thing almost flipped us in again. Oh, so maybe England was one. I, I, like I said, I can't remember. I saw a video about it. England is my city. Don't start that. Alright, so far so good. We gotta go over the ice here. Let's just go over this. That's kind of what I was afraid of. Exactly that. Okay, we'll try and stay avoid the ice chunks. Normally I go towards them, but... England should 100% be one. Yeah, maybe I got it backwards. Maybe England was one. They, the other person might have guessed uh, United Kingdom or something. I want to use that. You guys got... Oh, Scotland. There we go. South Vane got Scotland. I think that might be all of them. It's a plucky probe. You love the Tuz 166 with the wheels and raised suspension. It's even got the little uh, the little horns on the front, although mine's all beat up because it's hard mode. It's got dents and stuff all over it. Swaziland, Swaziland is a country. I've never heard of that. That's in South er, Africa somewhere, right? I think we're gonna miss it. Was it 335? Yep, 335. Okay. We just missed it for gold anyways. We might still get silver. I just remember three minutes and more was uh, bronze. There we go. Is 
It's not dented, it's aged. Yeah, it's, it gives it, uh... What do I always say? It gives it character. It's all beat up, but it's, it's just funny to look at the horns. They're all jacked. Like, it doesn't look good. These ones look decent. This one doesn't even have horns, does it? Oh no, it was either the horns or the lights, and I went with the lights, that's right. Switzerland, oh there we go. Yeah, that's one more as well. Poland, yeah, there's another one. I said I think you guys got them all, and then you guys pull out Poland and Switzerland. I totally forgot about those two. Oh, does the Solomon Islands count? I don't think that was one of them. It, it, like, again, I saw it on the, uh, a YouTube short the other day, so... Maybe that, I mean, maybe they're not even correct, I don't know. But, yeah, just kind of an interesting thing I saw and I was like, oh, cool. But yeah, I don't think you can count any islands, because then you gotta count every island. For every island that's a country, I guess. Solomon Islands is a country, so... Yeah, maybe they were wrong. I believe that actually would count because it has land in the name. That was the... that was the... the prompt. So I think the... the, the video that I watched was probably wrong. I would count that. JJ, read my comment above. I explain why the UK and England aren't the same. I think I read it. Or, no, it's South Fangs, I think I read. England 100% should be one. I think it... I think the one that you said is already already off the uh, screen. DJ, yeah, I know what you talk. I see the same short like two months back. Oh, okay. New Zealand. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, I, I keep thinking we got to the end of the list and you guys keep pulling out new ones. And some of these ones, like New Zealand, it's like, yeah, that's that's for sure one. It's got land in the name. Do you believe in the idea, idea excuse me, aliens could exist in our oceans? Um, I would say that's something I've never thought about before. I I don't know if I believe they do or don't. I would say probably not. They are trapped by the Meg, the Megalodon. Ooh. Jason Statham will help us meet help help us to meet them. I'm just thinking, so I gotta bring the Zix 605R where? I could bring it to go pick up that piece, but then I gotta bring a truck with a crane out there anyways. I could use the Taiga, or I could use the Step. Or oh, the Dan, that's right, I could use the Dan. That's what I should do, use the Dan. Be right back, okay, South Fang. Do 
do I know if they plan to add other characters to SmoRunner? Um, I don't know that and I don't think they would. Just because it's been so long. Like, I feel like at this point there's kind of no point to doing some of those things. You know, it's like, oh, we could add another character, but in two years the game's going to be... We're going to be on a new one, you know, like... We're going to start... Or we have a... Excuse me, not start. We have a one year left on this, and then we're going to start playing... Or people will start playing the new one. Probably not a year later, but, you know, they'll have, they'll have like a one year gap or something, probably. You're about to go to sleep. It's 23.30, so 11.30. You got a morning shift. Sounds good. Have a good rest of your night, Saki. Thanks for stopping in. It would be a really cool game idea for a recovery team. You name your company. Upgrade gear, you go out and do missions. Either bring gas to stranded off-road groups or tow slash recover vehicles. I've always thought one thing that they could do in SnowRunner would be add like a sort of a daily like mission or whatever. The daily mission could be different, but um, basically every map has either a train station or a port. So you would like drive to the port area or train station or, you know, some, some way they could bring like a daily thing in basically. And then you'd have to bring something somewhere. So it could be like, hey, drive to the, the port area. Like say, say for Michigan, it's like Drummond Island, you know. Drive to Drummond Island, pick up... I don't know, some wood planks and go deliver them to Black River. Like, they would they would pick random things for you to do. And it would just be a daily thing to keep every region kind of, you know, stuff to do, sort of. Like, you, you could 100% beat a region and it wouldn't, wouldn't affect it, but if you played a region and you completely beat it, but you wanted to do something that you, you know, do something there to kind of still have fun in that region, like, they could they could do that to sort of prolong the life of a region or something. Maybe pick up some metal rolls, go drop those off. The next day you pick up some cement, drop those off, and you, you would, more than likely you would drop them off at a place that already has those cargo. So like, um, you know, if you were to pick up metal rolls, you might drop them off at a rolled steel factory, like in Wisconsin or something. Uh, or if you were to pick up, I don't know, wood planks, maybe you drop them off at a lumber mill or, you know, something like that. I think it'd be kind of fun. Just a random thought I had. Uh, makes sense. Have you seen Nathan's map tier for difficulty video? Um, I've seen it before. I don't know if he's like updated it, but I don't think I've seen it for a while. I'd say it's probably like a year and a half or a year ago or something, maybe. That is a nice idea. Daily missions would be awesome. My dad sent me a 3,141 piece Lego for your birthday. I'm gonna be busy for a while, nice. I was just thinking the other day, like when is the last time you guys have built a puzzle? Like there's there's some cool puzzles out there. I, I mean, I haven't built one in like years, but I was just thinking those are pretty cool. I never noticed that tractor up there. How the heck did that guy get up there? Crap, I missed my turn again. Wait, do I still... Yeah, I got the Zix down there. If I flip... Oh, no, that's the... Yeah, whatever. Hello, Zatanna. Hello, Lightning Ninja. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, because I don't know about you. All these games make me feel like an astronaut. Totally isolated. Yeah. That's true. They don't have... There's never anything around, right? That's why, like, even the eagles in uh, expeditions, they move a little bit. It's like, oh my god, there's there's some life. Or, like, having the walkie-talkies and stuff, like, you talk to some people a little bit. Oh, great. Did I really just get myself stuck? Okay, no, we're good. We're not going that way. I should have turned around.
Did I pull the fuel stage cargo with a trailer? Um, yeah, we did. We pulled both fuel stages or whatever they are with the trailer. I believe we used the Taiga 6436 for both of them. But the one I did like three weeks ago, so I don't remember exactly what vehicle I used. I still do gotta go get the last, the third remaining part, but I gotta go get fuel. So I'm gonna bring this and the Acteon and a fuel trailer back there. So we're gonna pick up like, what would it be, 900, 1800, 2500 liters, I think. Because we got six, nine, and nine. 2400, I can't do math. Life in this kind of game is one of the pros of FS22. It's nice to see life, even if it's janky. Yeah, I agree. It's just everything feels so... Like... I know it's supposed to be you're like remote, you're out in the middle of nowhere, but there's like no life at all, you know? Like, you, no matter where you go, like there's buildings, but there's no people there. Or animals or anything. Only if you had the 963 or Master that make things easier. Yeah, it would be easier if you had those for sure. We like making things harder. Hello Chevy. Sorry I didn't see that earlier. Especially going through towns without pedestrians or vehicles, movement, yeah, anything. Like, even if you were just to drop it off and you saw one person that popped up at the end or at the start of every mission, or both. Preferably both. Like, whenever you accept a contract, you have to, like, go talk to somebody first or something. Like, it could be something simple, like, they're always at your garage or whatever, but... I don't know. Like, you should have at least a mechanic or something. Looks cold. Definitely cold and, and desolate and lonely and all that kind of stuff out here. Hey JJ, how's it going today? Pretty good, Brandon. How are you doing? Even Mudrunner, they have traffic? Really? I haven't really paid, played much Mudrunner, but I don't remember seeing any traffic. That's cool. AI traffic is another reason that I love uh, ATS. Yeah, at least ATS has some life, right? There's cars and stuff moving around, police, that sort of stuff. I don't, I don't like the delivering of loads as much in ATS as I do here in SnowRunner. But it is fun to deliver and definitely having people and cars and police and that sort of stuff makes it feel a little bit more lively. Basically it makes you feel lonely and isolated, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. There's traffic in Mudrunner. I don't remember that. But again, keep in mind, I've only played Mudrunner for maybe... Maybe eight hours? Something like that. Like, my Mudrunner time is very limited. Almost back to the garage. Would you guys recommend Mudrunner? I mean, I had fun with it. The controls are a little bit weird, just because it's older, but... Or maybe maybe they're weird because I'm used to SnowRunners, but... Uh, yeah, I like it. I'm having fun with it. I, I definitely have to play more of it still. I'd like to go back and beat all of the... Uh, I don't remember, what th I can't remember the name of them, but they're like little missions, sort of, like, 
you go to this map, you do one specific objective, and then you, you're done with it, basically. Um, and then they have other regions that are like... I don't know how... Like, you have to bring, like, eight sets of logs to these different places, or something like that, where it's... Like, one of them... So here's one of them. One of them you have to, like, go visit Grandma's house, or something like that it's called. And you have a, a little... 4x4 four four car which has no all-wheel drive and no diff lock and the, the grandma's house is only like 200 yards down the road but it's pretty tough to get to <laughs> um, so they're, they're kind of like random little objectives but then there's other bigger ones so, uh, like that would be pretty fun oh shoot I can't I can't winch the two trucks either I can take the trailer or I can take the truck but I can't take both but yeah, I would recommend it. I'm having fun with it. It's pretty cheap, too. I want to say it's like $5 or something. I could be wrong on the price, but I believe it's pretty cheap. Although some of the DLCs are like crazy expensive because they're super rare. I think one of them was like $1,500. You could probably like barter with them to get it down, but they're like... It's really rare, so they're like super expensive. But it's only the one DLC, actually, as far as I know. Oh no, we're slipping. Slips to the other side. Kind of going off the road a bit here. Have to go, guys. Sorry, JJ. Got another call. Have a wonderful evening and see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Thanks for stopping in, Mateo, and have a good rest of your night. Have a good day at work there, or rest of your day. And talk to you again soon. Parkinson's, you probably think about farm sim. The traffic is super annoying. <laughs> really? I don't mind the traffic. Like, they, are, they do some weird stuff in farm sim, but I don't mind the traffic. Uh, doing a 1,175 mile, 41,562 pound delivery that should take one hour IRL. <laughs> Yeah, it stinks having to go all the way out here for a couple hundred liters of fuel. Like, I, I definitely got to get a bigger truck. This is really time consuming. I'm basically refueling like every episode or every other episode. What do you guys think we should make our fuel truck? So we just put the uh, Acteon as a fuel truck, but maybe that'll be enough for the region, because after this we actually get a uh, 2,000 liter fuel tank we could drag around instead of the 900 liter one. Heck, maybe I just throw the 900 one in inside the truck bed, drag that with to th with the 2,000 liter one, and just use those too. You're having a break from school. You're on spring break. Very nice. How's that going for you, Lightning Ninja? Any fun plans for spring break? I remember when I was back in school, 
when we would have spring break, I would just go to a friend's house and we would like stay up all night playing video games and we would we would do that for like the entire week, but by the end of the week, we will we'll, we will have thrown our sleep schedule off by a full like 24 hours. We would basically play until we're too tired and go to sleep. So it'd be like, oh, we'll play till 2 in the morning, then we'll go to sleep. Oh, we'll play till 3 in the morning, go to sleep. Oh, we'll play till 7 in the morning, go to sleep. And then by the end of it, you're like playing at like, uh, well, it's more like play till like 2 in the morning, then like 5 in the morning, then like 7, then you're like 3 in the afternoon, then 5 or something like that. You throw it off till you're like right back to sleep at like your normal time. I remember I did that with my friends, like not, not trying to, we would just basically stay up and play video games till we're too tired to do anything go to sleep and wake back up and do it again the next day. Alright. I think we're going to stop this one here for now. We're still, we still got a ways to go, but I'm going to go get... Where's the Dan? We use the Dan. We're trying to go to the last stage of the uh, last stage for what is it? The um, rocket thing. I think I'll leave this trailer. Maybe. I don't know, do I want to bring it with? Yeah, because there's no good way to get down to that right there. Going this way anyways. I think I might come down that way, but it's going to be rough. Whatever, we'll try, I guess. See how far we can get with our fuel. Every time I go to a friend's house, I end up doing some unpaid manual labor. Yeah, that was part of it as well. They're like, hey, we're gonna remove all these bushes. You guys gotta help us for a little bit. And it's like, really? I mean, I did it every time, but like my one friend was always fixing cars, and so they're like, hey, you guys gotta help us lift this motor out of here, you know, some random stuff. And it's like, man. I didn't come, or like, they have a, the one friend had a, an older, older house, they had like a wood stove, so we'd have to go out and like chop firewood or like bring it downstairs to the basement, a big pile of it. It's like, man, this is not what I signed up for. Or they're like, hey, you can come over, but he's got to mow the lawn, so if you guys want to play, you guys got to mow, or you know, help him out or just sit here, one of the two, and it's like, well... I don't want to sit here by myself just doing nothing, so I guess I'll go help him mow the lawn for a bit. You know, I'll take out the... I'll take out the weed whacker or something. You can mow around the big areas. I'll take out the small stuff. Something like that. That's how it always ended up working out. There we go. I don't know if we have any extra fuel in this thing. I think we probably do, right? I don't really want to stop and find out right now, but I forgot it can kind of hold extra fuel for a while there, so. Maybe we can go get this rocket part and then bring it most of the way back, maybe even all the way, depending on how much fuel this, this thing actually has, if it has any. Whether it's mechanical work, landscaping, demolition, I'm most likely going to be there to do it. Yeah, I was kind of in the same boat. Like, I've had to help my friends with a bunch of stuff, like, my one's friend dad was, like, redoing the floor, we had to help with that. 
Um, what is some other stuff? Just helping like set up for a party and like all kinds of random stuff. Dude, we're really stuck. What? What are we stuck on? Tree roots? Back tires, maybe? That, that back tire's on a tree root, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's on some tree roots, maybe. Although we're not in much much better situation. That's actually why I wasn't in the stream Thursday through Thursday and Saturday. Wait. Oh, Thursday and Saturday I helped my friend's brother move down from Texas. Okay. Let's try and go further back, I guess. Yeah, like my one friend, we had to like re... They, they got cement poured in their driveway. We had to like put down the rebar and stuff. Like I've had to do a bunch of like random home improvement projects and random like upkeep like you were saying like you know go out and chop wood for their their old wood stove down in the basement and stuff like that most of the time they already had the wood like cut from a chainsaw into like maybe like one foot logs and then all you had to do was hit them a few times with an axe and chop them into like you know four or five or six little smaller pieces kind of Had to help one of my friends like re-shingle their roof once. And it's not that I had to help, it's like I just, I went over there and they're like, hey, this is what we're doing, so if you guys want to play your video games, you have to help for a while. I'm like, eh, whatever. That's a fair trade-off, right? If I want to do that, I'll just go to my grandpa. Yeah. I'd do that at my parent or grandparents as well. Not really as much as usually like just pick up some sticks around the yard or something, but... Maybe it's like a, a secret plot by my parents to... to sell us to get extra money. They're selling our labor. Here, yeah, he'll come over. He'll, he'll do some... Uh, I'll help you put shingles on your roof. Just give us like 20 bucks and we'll, we'll send them over to you. Something like that. He's like, I don't know what I grabbed there. There we go. The AG department at school made us do a hell of a lot worse than what we were talking about. Really? I didn't really mind helping out my friends. It's just some of it was kind of boring. It's like, uh, man, I don't really want to, like, I would rather be playing video games. But at the same time, it's kind of like part of the territory, you know? If you go over there, you have to, like, not all the time, but some of the time, whenever they're working on random stuff. You have to help them with that for a little bit before you can play, so... Like I said, it seemed like a fair trade-off. They get some labor, and we get some fun. You had to get a 200-pound log out of their yard, yikes. Hopefully it was a log that you could actually roll. I'm gonna have to, like, carry that thing. I am not able to turn at all. Uh, 
Let's see if we can pull the trailer to the side, maybe. That's nice, we got a good solid stick over there. I don't know how the trailer's gonna come back from that one. Looks like that might be stuck. It doesn't look like there's enough room for it to fold back down. There we go. Fold back down. Oh, it's probably pushed up from the ice against it, maybe. Went to my friend's house Sunday to eat with his grandpa, and we ended up moving a whole tree's worth of treated lumber. <laughs> Trade offer. I get to help with the house, you get to play some video games. Yeah, basically. Like, you help us for three hours, and you guys can play for six. Okay, yeah, that seems fair. Look how muddy this part is. Like, the front tires are just sank in. I, mean, I guess the back ones are as well, but... It doesn't look that bad, but yeah, you drive over it and it's, your tires are really sinking in. No, they're not bad. A couple inches. I think we'll stop up here to see if we have any more fuel. I don't know if we do. I'm guessing we probably fueled it up at the fuel station, but maybe I used it to get out of the map. I don't really remember. It's been almost three weeks since we played this, so... See if we do any, have any fuel. We do, it's full. Nice. Probably should have fueled it all the way up, but. The Dan's actually been a really nice vehicle to have uh, towing that little uh, fuel tanker around. Because I could put it up on the top here, on top of the Dan, the front part, or on top of the little add-on, or in this truck bed. It's kind of got three spots depending on what I'm driving around with. Oh no. Yeah, Dan the man. Uh-oh, we're going. Saw that coming. I was trying to dodge the rocks on the side, which is what we got hung up on. I flipped over in this same spot multiple times. I tried to, to turn and go into it with it, but it was a little bit too late. You can see the tires are turned to the right to try and get down the hill quicker, but did not work. This might not work either. It's pulling it pretty hard uphill. Well, there we go, yep. Yeah.
good spot to flip, I must say. Of all the spots to flip right next to the Tuz with a big vehicle and trailer. I'll give it an S. That might even be S plus right there. The best spot to possibly flip. I'll leave the Tuz there. We do have to come back with um, long logs and mediums, I think, through here. Dan taking a little bit of a nap, yeah. Hopefully it's not slacking. Alright, we're getting close. We gotta go into this little town area. I could cut through here, but man, it's really bad. It's so slow. I mean, it's slow in either way you go, but... Going through the woods with this trailer and trying to dodge all the trees would just not be fun, so... We'll try to do our best to get through this slow part with the day in here. I guess we'll have to break every short tree again. There we go. Finally got something that's not a short tree. Another one. Oh, I think we're stuck on tree roots now. Maybe not. Now you can see why this path is like so slow. Just winch into everything possible and still slow. Like I said, you could cut straight through. I mean, you can see the road over there, or like the kind of a clearing. Probably, I don't know, 100 yards away. Let's see if I can mark it. Not even 70. That was about where I saw it, too. I guess it's meters, 100 meters away. There we go. Probably can cut, well, you can actually cut right through right there, but yeah, I don't really feel like, again, going super slow. We're already going slow, so I don't want to slow the operation down any more than we need to.
Alright, finally getting close to the last, uh... Last part, let's track that. What is it? Orbital velocity. Oh, literally every possible tree. I think I might be better off just staying on the side of the road here. Greta Thunberg would be so mad. Look at this deforestation happening here. I'm thinking about making a song on what? What would this song be about? Greta Thunberg and deforestation? Man, I can't wait to get rid of this trailer. Actually, let's just do it now. Leave it here. That should help a slight amount, but I was just thinking to myself, actually, we probably want to go back the other way anyways with the trailer, so there's no point in pulling it all the way this way. Boat Snow Runner, nice. Jeez, man, this is so bad in here. I don't even know where I'm at. There we go. Oh, that's a big tree root. That's what we're stuck on. It's turning the whole truck around. There we go. Got past that. You're back, South Bang. Welcome back. So we're trying to go pick up the last of the engine assembly here. We still have yet to get fuel, so we gotta do that still. We got both of the trucks like somewhat... Uh, one of them is right outside the garage, one of them is like part of the way down the road, but neither one of them has made it to the fuel station yet. I just figured, you know, I'll probably... I should drive out to this part before I forget, because I was gonna go here with other trucks. This one, if it is a single slot, should fit in here. I know it's kind of tall. If I remember right, last time I'm pretty sure I used the uh, crocodile when I did this. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I did. Let's 
see. Yeah, we should be able to go to the left around this, I think. There we go. Finally. On some decent ground. I remember going through here with the tag it was rough. I do too. I remember going through here with like the 6455B. I think I went through here with the 6436 as well, but man, this place is so bad. Like there's just nothing you can do. What map? This is Erska River in Amir. We're finally at the turn, though. I think this is where it starts getting a little better. Well, maybe, maybe not here, but around, like right at the end of this part here. Because now I think we climb the hill and we go weaving back and forth, going back down it. I drove out the east entrance to the quarry though. Yeah, I probably would have, but I came through from the gateway. And so if I wanted to go that way, I would have had to go all the way. Well, I probably should have still gone that way, I guess, but I would have had to go south. I thought this one might be a little bit better. I just forgot how bad this road is. Because the other roads, maybe even it's maybe it's a longer path, but it's definitely a better path. If you have done the task to open it, I advise taking that route. Yeah, we've done the task. I think we only have two tasks left on here. Maybe it's even one. Actually, yeah, I think it is one. Let's see. Oh no, two. I'm gonna try and guess where you are going to the Northern Aegis Installation Gateway. Um, no, we came from the gateway from Northern to here, but we, I mean, I guess we're headed towards it, sort of. Like, right, mm, probably right about now we're facing, like, directly at it. Let's see. Oh, no, a little bit off to the side still. Directly at it would be this way. So a little bit, a little bit more to the side, to the left, I guess. I was way off where you were going. Yeah, we took a long way to get here. Probably the well, long way and the wrong way for sure. Finished all the tasks in Erska before heading into NAI. I didn't do all the tasks. I did some of the tasks, and then I went to Northern. I just, I wanted to get it done. I just figured if we can get that done, then we have no reason to go back there. Because I didn't want to do, like, part of this one, and then go to Northern, and then have to go to Cosmodrome, and then into Cherno, and then all the way back to Northern to finish off a few things. So I wanted to finish everything there was in there first. Yeah, now we're at the mine here in here in uh, Erska River. Why does the part seem tiny? Oh, I can see it. There we go. I was like, geez, that seems super small. All right, so we're getting down there on fuel. We'll probably run out at some point on this one. Maybe we'll get there. I don't know. Oh god. Of course I drop the trailer and then blow a tire. A 
Let's repair it. 106 in a tire. Actually, that's for fuel as well. There we go. That's all the fuel we have. Yeah, it is really small. 20 minutes in, and I'm already dozing off. Dang, you got a long way to go there, Tank Baby. You got at least another 40 minutes, probably, you said. Is that water? I don't remember there being water in there. It's been a long time, though. I'm, I've only been here, like, twice. Because there's no reason to really ever come over this way. The roads never really lead you to this, so... Yeah, this looks like a flip waiting to happen, doesn't it? Maybe not now, but on the way back with that big rock poking out there. Montana to Cali, 37 minutes from now. Yeah, I guess we'll try and keep going straight, see if we can get over. Oh no, now I stopped and lost momentum. Kind of surprised we got out of that, to be honest. Alright. Yeah, this is a lot smaller than I remember. Packed up and ready to go. Now the fun part. Getting it back out of here. Which, to be honest, I think we'll save that for another video. We'll go and move those uh, fuel trucks a little bit. Probably leave this one here. Oops. I keep trying to shut off my truck like I do on expeditions and it doesn't work that way. So let's go pick up some fuel. We got a little ways to go yet. Managed to get into a virtual trucking company too. What do you mean by virtual trucking company? Like some kind of a... Gosh. Wow, that was a nice flip. Like a trucking community, some something like that? Some kind of trucking company like that way or Oh, we're gonna slide, don't oh, know. There, got both tires back on. Like a guild? Nice, yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Something like that. Yeah, pretty much. Makes sense. ATS has an online feature where certain people can dispatch loads and assign them to you. Oh, really? That's cool. Always more fun to play with others, definitely. I just gotta get up over the hill. 
Like I said, I have the Con Sentinel sitting at the fuel station, which actually I've, I've never really thought about it, but it's kind of a good spot. If we run too close on fuel, we can just run that one out. But I can't use my mod trucks in the online part, so I just stay out of them. Okay. Spend way too much money on ATS and you don't regret it. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Like I said, I only have like three maps and I added all, all the DLCs to my wish list, I think. Not all of them, actually. All the ones I thought would be nice to have. And I think on sale, it was a total of like, I wanna say it was like 105 or 107 or something. I feel like 107 might've been the number. But that's on sale at like, I think it was like 40% or something. I think it was like, uh, cause I know some of them weren't on sale at all, but most of them were around like 30, 40, some were 20, something like that. Some were probably like 50 or 60 even, but probably on average it was like 30% off, something like that. And I was like, dang, 30% still $107. We're definitely not making it there with this, are we? Don't get all the DLCs, just the maps. Yeah, I had all the maps, but I had a couple of them that I thought looked cool, like uh, heavy equipment and... I don't know why that's the only one I can really remember right now, but there was a couple other ones that I thought looked really cool, so it definitely was not all of them. But I think the total was like 107, got like 20, 30, 40% most of them off. 20 to 40 was most of them. But yeah, like I said, there was some of them that were like, I think Texas was full price, that was a couple months back when that came out, or maybe it was even longer than that. Um, Texas, Oklahoma, there's a couple of newer ones that were like, maybe 10% off compared to, you know, most of them being 30 or 40. And then I think one of them was like brand new, so it was like not on sale at all. Do you have all of the DLCs? Hey Artem, welcome back. How are you doing Artem? Oh no. Trailer really just flipped back over, dang it. It's gonna make it hard to pull. Exactly what we don't need in this spot. Heavy equipment, Volvo construction equipment, special transport. Yeah, I think special transport was another one. I think all three of them might have been, honestly. Because I, I just clicked on a couple of ones that I thought would be fun to add to that. You know, just the maps. And I think all three of those might have been on there. Good new quick stream summary. Um, we flipped a few times. We did... Part of the rocket stuff, um, we're working on getting fuel. With uh, both of our smaller trucks, the, the Warthog and the Acteon and the fuel trailer. Uh, we did a couple of smaller tasks, but yeah, I would say it was kind of more of a getting set up for the next video, because we're gonna go get fuel. And, uh, yeah, we got the, the Dan set up at the place to get the engine assembly for the last part of that. 
So we're, we're kind of just setting up vehicles for the next one, really. Farm equipment isn't really worth it. I barely see any job listings for them. Okay, I think that might have been another one. I thought that one looked pretty cool. I don't remember what they look like, so I'd have to check back, but I feel like I probably added farm equipment. And JJ, most of the maps are 50% off right now. Alright, here, let me... I'm gonna pause this quick. I'll even look. I don't think I have it up, but... Let's see here. I'll see what, what it what it says. Well, it's loading. I'll keep moving. Or maybe it didn't even... Looks like it's not loading. But I want to say it was like 107 for like all the maps and then like... Maybe three or four. I don't, I don't remember exactly how many uh, random like... The heavy equipment and uh, what was the other one you said? Heavy equipment and special transport. I'm pretty sure both of those were on on the list that I wanted. The Volvo one, I don't know. I feel like that probably was on there as well. The construction equipment. How many flips total? The whole hard mode? Oh, I have no idea. Absolute no idea. I think sometimes, I mean, if you look at the end of my season one video, I, uh, I went to a crashed helicopter to res- or not rescue, to recover, uh, one- not recover either, that's a bad word, to pick up, I guess. Um, one spare parts, I think it was. And I flipped over like 15 times. I was with the Actia and I was just, I refused to be beat by the game. And I had an autonomous winch, so I was just rescuing myself like left and right. I know in the, in uh, the start of Yukon a few times, like the first episode we probably flipped like six times or something. Oh my god. That just destroyed the truck. Man, this is going to be really close if we can make it to the fuel station or not. Oh no, no, no. That might have screwed us up. Okay, nope, we were able to get over to the side. There we go. Stick it. Okay, we got 20. Let's take out the all-wheel drive. Let's see if we can coast a bit. Nice, yeah, we made it, I think. Should be. Just barely making it to the fuel station here. Oh no. That's not good. I remember one time in Alaska, I coasted, like, I had to literally shut off my engine and, like, coast down the hill. And I got to a, a fuel trailer with like, I think it was one fuel left, like one liter, out of like 220 or 30 or whatever it was, something like that. I was like, oh man, that was close. Alright, let's fill this up. That's uh, $370 or whatever, and this is $1,200. And then we got some repair supplies. I didn't even check what the price was, but 60 times 2, 180, or was it 60 times 2? Yeah, it was $2, so it must have been 120. Alright. So, I mean, I guess at least we don't have to worry about running out of fuel. I was kind of worried if we would or not. I was genuinely questioning, like, if we run out of fuel on all of our trucks, what am I going to do? 
But we at least made it. I think this one has a good amount of fuel. I think it might even be full. Turn on the brights for you guys. Isn't the Western Star 57X on your wish list? Uh, no. No, we have the 57X. We have every DLC in SnowRunner. Oh, you mean on, on, uh... On ATS, right? I don't think it is. I don't think I added any trucks to the wish list on there. I just wanted the maps to have more variety. Oh, come on. We are slipping again. There we go. You trained hard at school today, so you won't go to the gym. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Checks out. Yeah, an ATS. No, I don't think I have any trucks on there. I'm, I mean, it might be on my list, but I don't think I added any trucks. I'm pretty sure I didn't. There we go. Yeah, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably not on my list. What is your favorite map on ATS? I... I mean, I only have three, I think, California, Nevada, and Arizona. So I don't really know. Um, all I know is I don't really like California because the speed limit's slower and I like to drive fast. So Nevada or Arizona? I don't know. I guess I'll go with Arizona. That's where my base is, my uh, headquarters or whatever. So maybe there? I really, I don't know. I I haven't really played ATS all that much. Oh, uh, hello Ian, welcome to the stream. We're uh, pretty much wrapping it up here. Playing just a little bit. I'm gonna try and get back to the other truck and then I think we'll probably end it. Usually we're done at like five or Maybe 5.30. It's uh, 5.34, so we're not too uh, terribly over, but... Yeah, I think maybe I'll get back to there, I'll refuel that truck, and then we'll be able to run here at the start of the next episode and uh, refuel the Acteon and the trailer. That'll give us like 1,800 liters. That probably will last us for a bit, I guess. Oh my god, what was that? Oh no, oh that was close. Start slipping down. Welcome back to the spoon. Or er, welcome back to oh, I can't even talk. Welcome back to the stream spoon. Welcome back to the spoon, huh? Totally not biased. Texas oh god. Oh no. Well that's a rip. That is a rip. Luckily, it's not a total rip, but that is a rip. Yep, time to rage quit. Um, just played two hours. Doing all the levels with Legolas on two towers. I was streaming while watching you. Good technology these days, nice. Before you could use your phone, we'll be on the internet, good old times. Nice. All right. Wait. Do we have? No, we don't. We don't have our engine. So it's it's at an angle, but not quite good enough. Rage quit time. Yep. You know it. We are done. That's usually what happens. I try and speed up a little bit too much at the end, and then something goes wrong, and after rage quit. Yeah, it's a bummer because I wanted to bring this fuel over to this truck and then run that one to the fuel station at the start of the next episode. So now I gotta drive something, probably the Sentinel here. Drive this truck out to flip this truck 
and then drive this truck out to f fuel up this truck and then drive this truck all the way back to the fuel station and then drive that all the way out to our trucks. So, yeah, that'll be it for today. Yeah, that's a mirror for you. Well, I blame I blame Tank Baby. His his chat was the reason I looked over and it was like Texas is the best map and then flipped. So, all Tank Baby's fault. Never would have happened without Tank Baby here. Obviously, I'm just kidding. Um, I think I got all of them. I also have music class and school, so I don't want to come home to bed then to bed. Okay, gotcha. Night night tank. You hate when the game does that. Uh, I wouldn't say that's the game. I would say that was me doing that. That was my driving. I uh, looked away for a quick second, and the the road turned to the right. I went straight straight into it. But yeah, that'll be it for uh, today's episode, guys. So tomorrow we'll be doing expeditions. We'll be back to SnowRunner on Wednesday. We'll probably just do every other day for a bit here. Hoping to complete... I had to make him rage quit. Was itching for it. Nice. Um, yeah, we're going to try to complete expeditions, hopefully, in the next, like, two weeks. I don't know. I don't think we'll have enough time to. So we'll probably end up end up doing, like, uh, some some season 13 and then some hard mode and then some expeditions and then some season 13 again I don't know exactly how we'll do it but it'll have to, it'll have to have some kind of a breakdown like that so oh gosh sliding all over the road but yeah I'll uh, I'll end this one here so thanks everybody for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and uh, hope you have a good rest of your day or night and I'll see you all again soon